waitress, bro. Thank you. 
It's either going to hit the 14 or the other. Or scratch or <laughs> do any of those things. But Hail Mary.
This is Wesley. Um, I don't know who all is playing here, but it looks like we got some Park St. Lucie fans up in there. I don't know if this is silver or gold or bronze. We're on a team, the uh, gold division, and we just lost. All good, a lot of mini events going on. Hoping we get the uh, Scotch Doubles finals on the stream table at some point. You know, uh, Thomas Morgan and uh, Tammy are on the team, they're in the finals. They're from Georgia, so got to root them on. It'd be cool if we could keep the score up here, it's kind of tricky the way the format is in this, but. I have no idea what the standings are. Yeah, if you aren't familiar with the format, each each player plays three racks against well, let's just say one rack against three different opponents. And they alternate the break, and each ball is worth a point, and the A ball is worth three points. And then just whoever gets the most points wins the match. So it makes it a little interesting because if you're behind in the match, sometimes you might want to actually just take the balls that you make on the break. Because the balls you make on the break. Count towards your opponent if you end up shooting the, um, the opposing balls. So it's kind of a fun format. Team formats are always kind of fun. But I'm just over here waiting for uh, the other matches to finish before we play again. So. on the break, but then misses opening shot, and then, so that means the table's open, and in this format, it's 
open up to the breaker guard so what you make. So it's smart to use the six to shoot that ball on the side. Because you can't do that obviously once you're you already established your set balls. You shouldn't really have any problems here. Just kind of stay in line. Um, straight in, either on the 12 or the 11 to probably playing the 10 as his key ball, I would guess. But you could really use any of them. So he just didn't put enough right English on that to come out. He just ended up coming right behind the ball. Uh, it looks like it goes by the two. Yeah, it definitely goes by the two. So it's a pretty tricky shot. He's got to kind of spin. Hold it, <coughs> hold it for the ten on the side. side of the eight, play the eight in the uh, opposite corner. Let's see what he does. Oh, he hit the wrong side of the five there. He wanted to hit the five more full and stick it there. It was a little tricky. But again, in this format, it's not, I mean, obviously you don't want that to happen, but you still get the point for the ball you make. So even if his opponent were to run out from here, he would still get seven points. And then his opponent would get 10. So it's a little different than if you were playing just by winning each individual game. Ball oh, handling the open table should be a pretty big favor to run out. I don't really see any issues here. I'm guessing he just hit it a little too hard and was trying to play the three in the corner. So this, this, makes, the, this makes the rack a little uh, tricky. He's got to play the seven and then get an angle on the three to go one way for the six. And I just overcut it. It's a little tricky. I think he can just, I think he can just shoot this on the side. The danger in that is obviously scratching in the corner, but either that he can just roll it in the corner. It looks like he can shoot it to hold below the side pocket from scratching, so let's see what he does. center pocket, he, uh, the ball would have gone down a little lower, so he wouldn't scratch, but I think he's overcutting it. Uh, tangent line is pretty dead to go on the other side. A little unfortunate there. Really. Shot. It looks like he, uh, he's kind of poked at it a little bit. And probably 
jumped up a little bit. Gary may or may not join us here in a second, but he's going to run to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm not sure where the standings are. The uh, table next to them, or next to 62, that's the other match for the event going on. I should say the match. Some action, late night action, people drinking, just having a good time, separating their wings, making a little money on the side, you know. A lot of cool vendors, you know, bought a t-shirt, a teammate bought a couple shirts. So, it's good to show to support some of them, get those guys out here. Definitely don't need any more cues. Or, I mean, there's some pretty nice ones out there. Pretty square, and you know, hit it. You know, you want to put a little bit of top spin so that kind of stops on the side of the table. But it's always the danger in that break. When I played in the eight ball tournament, I scratched at least seven or eight times on the side, just like that. And it just takes a little adjusting to get used to it. Because I've just found the sec ball break just doesn't really spread the balls very well. I end up really clustered. But the, obviously, the danger in this. Hitting the head ball is either breaking dry and just leaving it in the free opponent or what he did is scratching. Sometimes it'll just go straight back into one of the corners or like he hit it right on the side. So I prefer breaking from the bottom rail. Right I feel like you can get a little more power and control off of it, but so this is more solid here. It's the right choice because the nine the nine and the eleven are tied up. And there's not really any way to break it out other than possibly using the fifteen and don't really want to be doing any of that. There's only other problem it looks like the five. Yeah, looking at it, I might go just past the one. But I would imagine he's gonna try to shoot the one before he gets on the five. To open the pocket up a little more. My man Wesley filling in. What's up, buddy? Yeah, what's up? Just waiting between matches. We're in the uh, team event. So. How you guys doing so far? We won our first two. We had to play uh, Steve Richmond's team. You know, he plays. He plays real solid. So. Yeah, he's been out of it for a little while. Went through some personal things, and he's just now kind of getting back into it. We played them uh, earlier, and they put us in the losers bracket. 
and then uh, you know Jose Lito. Yeah, yeah, we played them first round. Yeah. His team just knocked us out. Uh, well, I criticized my teammates, but I did probably the dumbest thing I've ever done at a table. <laughs> my shoe came untied, and I just set my cue with my cue stick on the table, and I set it right on top of the cue ball. Oh no! <laughs> and it hit like five balls. Oh, I was like, oh well. <laughs> that was pretty dumb. You know what? Sometimes we just don't think <laughs> about things, and it happens. And somehow I ended up winning the rack, and then I broke Dragon Steve, and he ran out, and we lost by like 35 points. Like it was really bad. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> but oh well. Yeah, they get a sneaky little team there with Rom and Willie, and obviously Steve Richmond. Yeah. So they get a sneaky little team there. Yeah, they all play solid. For sure. Yeah. So. And then uh, my teammate Thomas Morgan there in the finals of the uh, Scotch Doubles tournament. Okay. Him and uh, Tammy Baker. So. Oh, man, I'll tell you, you guys are in the finals of everything, right. aren't you? Right. You win in the eight ball. David win in the nine ball. Right, yeah, we're on a tear out here. I'll tell you what, Tammy plays good, too. So if you got her in the doubles, uh, Scotch Doubles, that's pretty good. Yeah, th they want you to watch a hit. Oh, that's cool. He's shooting the 11. Yeah, he drew back, broke it out, but I don't really think it's going to be a like, close call. I think he can just like poke at it with a little left, spin it in. He's just going to make sure to get the cue stick out of the way when the cue ball comes up the rail. Speed. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it should be okay. Looks like you just go two wheels. Yeah, two. actually, it may, it may work out better than you thought. So, did they move? Um, did they make David a master since he won in this event? Um, no, not, not for this event. Okay, it doesn't. They don't instantly bump you up. Right. I guess it's because he already registered. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but next year he'll come in as a master. Right, right. Yeah, he was pretty fit on that, so he kind of had a game ball to position, so. Yeah. I think he might be able to spin this in. It's close. <coughs> so the, the eight blocks the uh, cross corner, too, so. Yeah. Must be getting to the nitty gritty here in this match. Mm -hmm. I was pretty safe. Okay. It's a pretty smart move. Yeah, the four doesn't go, so. Now, if I'm shooting the five, I'm probably playing safe also. I'm just. Right. Um, I think this is a silver division. So you just want to open up and send the five up. So that if you get ball in hand, you can shoot the four up table. Yep, pretty exactly good. Exactly like that. You don't have to shoot the combo. Yeah, and I would go two rails. Try to hit the bottom side of it and just kind of tap it into the rail. Yeah, it's, it's all about the speed here. Yeah, it's a tricky shot. A lot of people would just go sh straight into the bottom rail with a lot of spin, and that's not terrible, but um, when you have to hit it soft, it makes it a little harder to yeah. control the speed in the hit. Even if he... Um, he could get lucky even if he doesn't hit the bottom of the 12. If he hits the top of the 12, he might roll up and not have a shot on the four. So there's a lot of potential. I think he's looking at going two rows the other way and trying to make it in the corner. Oh, man. Coming between the eight and the four? Yeah, that's what he's looking at. I, don't that know. I, would, I like going this way. Yeah, what he's looking at now. Yeah, that's a high skill level check. I don't know. If yeah. Chris Filippelli, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for checking in with us. Thanks for stopping in yesterday again. Surprise visit. You 
I had to drive three hours to go get you some White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. The girl's like, you forgot to bring White Castle go on <laughs> Friday night? Yeah, my dad loves White Castle. We eat that in Ohio every time we visit family. That's awesome. So, like, Saturday night, they're like, guess where we're going for dinner? That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, oh, if you would have hit it just leaked out. Yeah, if you would have hit just a little softer, you would have froze right up on it. A little softer, just a little but maybe the, fatter. The right idea, yeah, that's the shot for sure. But you know what? Does the 12 block the 8? Let's see. It's hard to tell from here. I don't think it does. Because if it did, then he's still you know, right. making okay. it tough on his opponent. He looked at straight. Uh -oh. It's kind of hard to actually get on the 5. Yeah. I'm telling you what, he hit it pretty damn good, though, for that speed. I'm playing, are we playing safe here? Oh, yeah, probably. Just come off the right side of the... Yeah, you force your opponent to come with a shot. Yeah, just bring the cue ball down here in the side pocket. And closest yeah. to us on the monitor. Yeah, it's kicking at two rails in the corner. It's, it's a tough shot. So. Well, the problem is if the 8 doesn't go by the 12, you don't get any reward out of it. Right. Oh, he's playing it. Okay, he's banking he, it. Yeah, I was going to say, he could bank it down there, too. Kind of like a two-way. Yeah. Thing that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah, yeah there's a true part of the shot. was just controlling the cue ball. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, you can just shoot it in the opposite corner of the five and shoot a stop shot. And then shoot the eight meter on the side. Yeah, he's got options. It's uh, just holding your nerves and exactly. not um, you know, under hitting it. Yeah, just on the stroke or overhead net. Or you try to hit that stop shot, you hit a little draw on it, and then you draw back a couple inches, and you know, you're out of line. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, I think you should stop shot here and then shoot the eight up in the other corner. That's mm -hmm. fine, too. Mm -hmm. He's looking to roll forward and play the eight in the bottom left. Which I don't really care for as much. He might just be rolling up straight forward a few inches. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you got five options to shoot right. there, so you know, it's not, uh, I would say it's not, not everybody wants pepperoni on the pizza, pizza somebody wants sausage, you know. Right. A lot, you got a lot of options and choices. Exactly. Pressure there. That was the that was the winning game. I don't know if there's any more racks going on. That might be it. I think that was it for that match. It all came down to that game. You want to talk about all the pressure there? You know, everybody's watching you. You got the whole team sitting on your shoulders. You're like, I don't want to screw this up. Right, right. Absolutely. He pulled he pulled through, man, like a champ. Yeah, team events are tricky. I don't mind dogging it for my money, but dogging it for someone else's money is tough. <laughs> that is tough, man. It's a whole nother pressure. It's a whole nother, you know, just that letting somebody else down. You're like, oh, yeah, that's brutal. man. So. What time is your next match? I'm scheduled for 5.30, but the other match wasn't done yet. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we had to wait three hours between matches. Yeah, we did too. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah they, we were, we, they, they still haven't finished, so, I mean, we lost so bad, we didn't even have to play the last, like, four racks. So. Oh, man. Yeah. It's no surprise that we're still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. It's nice to win that way. It sucks to lose that way. Right. I mean, I don't think any of us can complain. We, we're doing pretty well in all the other tournaments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys, like, it would be... Uh, you guys should feel super guilty if you like sweep all all the <laughs> events, you know, like singles and teams. Right. It's like, come on, man, that's not right. You gotta have some kind of conscience. <laughs> Let somebody else win something. Spread, spread the love a little bit. Yeah, you know. it's like, man, Florida's gonna go broke because all the money's in Georgia. <laughs> that's scary thinking like that. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, man. So what else is going on? So your first experience here at the West Coast Challenge, like, uh, what are you thinking about the, the venue and how, they, you know, just the format with teams and singles? Yeah, it's been awesome. Just matches everywhere. You can just sit down and watch anyone play, and there's all different skill levels. Yeah, so. that's, you know, that's what a lot of people are like, oh, I don't play that good. Don't worry. Yeah, there's exactly. they have that They have you covered, you know, right. especially in the teams, you know. You know, if you're not familiar, if you're only have ever only played APA, think of it as you have a kind of two, three, mediocre four skill level. Then you have your five, six mm -hmm. level, and then you have your seven and above level. So yeah, that's your bronze, silver, and gold. So it's like there is a format for everybody. Absolutely. I feel like they've done a really fair job of gauging everyone's skill level. I don't feel like anyone's been robbing any of the silver or bronze divisions. No, them, so. and it, you know, and, and people, and the hardest thing ever is to gauge a handicapped event. Absolutely. Because you know what? You could, and I use APA because that's what most people are familiar with. You know, you could be a five. You could come in here and have the tournament of your life and play like a seven all day long for the weekend, and people are going to be like, oh, this guy's stealing. Right. And then he's going to go home next week and play like a three, you know, because it's just life. Yeah. So, but they do. They do their homework to the best of their ability. Um, and I'll tell you what they did a couple of years ago. They, forf they banned a team because the guy that um, – Signed the team up and was, you know, kind of, I don't want to say, for better lack of terms, vouching for everybody. You know, he had them under handicapped, even though they were in the gold division. There was probably legitimately three masters on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're saying, no, no, we only have one. Um, and, uh, you know, they told him, you're not welcome back, you know. So. You, know, you might get in once, fool, you know, the old saying, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you. So, right. you know, it's, um, you know, they do their best to, you can't gauge everybody, but they, I b truly believe they do a good job yeah. of gauging everybody. There's a, it's a big gray area. You know, and people are always going to complain no matter what. So. You can't make everybody happy all the time, That's and if that, you did, yeah. you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if you're not pissing somebody off at some point in time, you know, what's the point? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but they, they do a good job. And, and uh, for, like, perfect example, you have the men's singles division. You have an A and a B. A third of the B division could certainly play in the A. It, it, it's almost like an, it's a, probably an, an area that you could almost have three divisions, but you'll lose the numbers and entries so it doesn't make the, the payout as worth it but um, and it's certainly that much harder to run and you know, it's just tough but um, I'm going to try to talk to them and see if they'll start a senior division oh that'd be cool yeah. uh, maybe 55 or 60 and older because and there's a lot of talented guys that play good that are you know they're up there in age but you know what yeah. they can't fade the 12 14 hour days and yeah. it's hard to fade the the young young guys with this you know super strong eyes and strokes and so it's a little unjust for them so yeah i feel like our our team has a big advantage because the tournaments we play on they go 20 24 hours straight with no no yeah. stopping <laughs> you know um it's that big tournament in covington you know yep, once exactly my, that guy saying, man, what's going up to coming? I'm like, dude, I'm way too old for that shit. <laughs> Anything after about eight or ten hours, like, I'm I'm into the trash can. Like, <laughs> you can just roll me up, throw me away, because I am all done. Yeah, what's helped me the most with that is just getting in shape, losing weight and all that. Yeah, so now, you've, now you've done pretty well. You've yeah. lost, uh, you know, some pounds. You look good. Yeah, I've lost about 60 pounds in the last couple of years. That's beautiful. Yeah. And how do you feel that it uh, helped you with your game? Oh, it's, it's way easier. It's yeah. just more energy. And especially when I'm reaching for a ball, it's just no problem at all. Right. So. Matter of fact, somebody commented uh, earlier, uh, you know, when your table hooked, it's called belly hooked, you know, <laughs> and you're stretching on the table, right. you know. So, yeah, I mean, I've been saying it since the day I was born. I, you know, I need to lose a few pounds and uh, get in shape. But, you know, I don't want to rush into this right now. You know, I really need to be, take my time and just think about But uh, 
Yeah, food's pretty good, so. I, you know, it's, it's funny, like, that's my Achilles. I don't drink, I don't smoke, but, man, I love me some food. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I'm a huge, like, I love pasta. Absolutely, yep. You know, I've, I've really cut back on my sweets over the years, but, mm-hmm. man, I had a sweet tooth, like. <laughs> yeah, I used to drink probably a liter of Coke every day. It was bad. Yeah. So I, I don't drink soda at all anymore. I'm like, I'm drinking basically black coffee, maybe a little creamer, so. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I I like to uh, have maybe a soda or a sweet tea with a meal, but other than mm-hmm. that, I drink water all day. I'll drink. Yep. It's but I do I, I do construction. I'm phys- you know I work outside in the heat, so it's nothing for me to drink eight ten bottles of water or maybe a Gatorade during the day. Yeah. And, and in the summertime, maybe even more. Um, right. Yeah. But, sometimes if you're real active, you need the carbs, honestly. So. Yeah, and that's kind of like that's how I justify it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I sweat a lot. I'm outside, you know. I can walk to the refrigerator yeah. and counter. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So I feel like, you know, um, yeah, I can have that extra, you know, slice of pizza or pie, you know, or two. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but um, I know uh, Anthony Fisher from Ocala, you know, we, mm-hmm. same thing. He says, you know, I cut out all the sugars. Same thing, lost like 40, 50 pounds. And, and it wasn't like he was a super big guy to start with, but, you know, he says, man, I, my game is better. I feel so much better. Um, you know, it's like anything. It, it's hard to commit to it and and stick with it. But what, he said, once you, right. like anything, once, once you get through the first couple of weeks, you feel the change. You're like, all yeah. right. It's you lose the cravings pretty quick, honestly, within yeah. about a week or two. Yeah. Which is, that's that's the key right there. You know, once you get past that hump. Yeah, what I did, I did keto for a while, and then I moved into an apartment complex that had a pool table in the lobby and no one would ever play in the table so i would work till about 4 a.m and i would just come in and hit balls for like two hours every day and nobody said nothing because they didn't they couldn't hear it Mm -mm. no no one said then they they had the uh workout equipment upstairs well yeah that makes it convenient when you're at home right sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself at home but um you know if you if you get set your mind to it now you like say you got the table there you can hit balls you can go work out exactly Good for you, man. Yeah, but kind of suck. They went kind of COVID crazy, and mm. they, they shut down the lobby for like a year and a half. So, ouch. Yeah, I, I couldn't really justify spending like fourteen hundred dollars a month. So, <laughs> I yeah. ended up moving. But now I live like a mile from the pool rooms. So. <laughs> well, you know that's convenient too. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're real close to a, a good room like that, it, it makes it easy because it's like, you know what? I'm there in a few minutes. So let me go pop in for an hour, right. even forty-five minutes. Hit balls for a few minutes, and I can go to work. I can go to whatever exactly. I gotta do. See if I get some cheap action, and if not, then just go home. You know, yeah. eat a sandwich, whatever. <laughs> so. But it's nice to have that convenience exactly. of you know being right down the street. You know, when I was playing more, you know, I got a room was literally like five minutes away. So yeah, I, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm in and out. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I've gotten away from playing as much now. I spend more time just at the house with my girlfriend, and enjoying life. Yep, yep, absolutely. But the problem is, I still like to eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so I'm like, wow, oh, man. She's trying to reel me in because she's uh, she's very into you know taking care of herself, and I'm like. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't gained weight because after my car accident, I haven't been able to work out at all. So I've been just sitting in my room playing video games like all day. Oh, <laughs> man, that's brutal. <laughs> and I still haven't gained any weight, which is weird. Well, good for you, so, though. Yeah. Doing something right, I guess. Well, probably part of it is the diet. The, you know, you cut out a lot of the sugars, like the sodas yeah. and stuff you said. So, you know, you're still in good shape as far as like, staying away from that stuff. Right. You don't have the cravings, like you said. That's a, And that's a huge factor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. So you don't know what team you're waiting on? Uh, I guess there is still a match that you're waiting on, one of two. We were watching some of it, but I don't Yeah, I still haven't posted it. It's Alcoholics Unanimous and Crooked Q, Cobra Kai. I don't know who plays on those teams. Mm, Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we have to win, what, five more matches to make it to the finals? Yeah, it's very possible. It's, it's yeah, I mean it's a fun event. I wasn't sure about the format, but it's actually a lot of fun. So. It is, and and you know what? If you come here with that mentality, you're going to have a good time. Right. If you come here thinking, "Oh, I'm going to make a bunch of money," well, exactly. you're going to be a little disappointed. But you know what? Um, it's, the teams don't pay out like the singles do. But 
it's fun. Yeah, and, and if you come out here with that mentality, hey, you know what? I got. I'm here with my friends. We're having a good time. That's what it's all about. You'll yeah. enjoy yourself. It's cool just meeting different people and just kind of talking. So sure. Yeah. So how'd you get started playing pool when you were younger? Um, I started playing a little bit when I was about like 12 years old. Mm-hmm. I watched some of the women's events on TV. Didn't know anything about pool. So I was watching play, them play nine ball. And, of course, everyone that starts playing in bars and stuff knows eight ball. Yeah. So I had no idea what the heck was going on. And then, like, Ava Matai Warren, Jeanette Lee, are always commentating those matches. Great. So then my, uh, I went to a uh, Presbyterian church growing up. And so I talked my parents into uh, me going to youth group, like, two or three times a day. <laughs> and uh, But the only reason I really wanted to go is because they had a pool table. And they, uh <laughs> So you, did, you were hustling before you knew what hustling exactly. was. I pretend I was interested in the Bible study and be like, okay, is he done talking? Can, we, yeah. can I play some pool now? <laughs> exactly. I like it. I like it. Okay. So that's kind of how I got into it. And then my parents ended up buying a pool table for me. And, nice. And uh, eventually, I, well, I played APA Juniors when I was like 15. Okay. And I didn't really understand the format, barely knew how to play nine ball, but I beat everyone really bad. So I was like, huh, I guess I should just play with the adults and see what happens. So then I got to know the owner of uh, this place called Fast Break Billiards. Okay. And um, now is this in the Atlanta area, Georgia? Or? No, I grew up in Apopka, Florida. Yeah, I went to school in Maitland. Fast Breaks. That was okay. That's outside was of Orlando, by, right? Um, it was in Longwood. Yes, I remember that room. I think the owner actually passed away. He had a lot of health issues. He had t- type two diabetes. And, I remember that room. Yes. Um, Ted Ted Leepak was his name. Okay. And his son Bryce was. Yes. Um, he was like 11 or 12 years old when I was in high school playing. And he was a pr- he was actually a pretty good uh, junior player when he mm-hmm. was young. So but it was kind of it's kind of interesting looking back because a lot of the pool rooms don't even let you in because of smoking and alcohol and all that. Right. But I I can't even believe my mom would even let me go play because I I went to a private Christian school and I'm going to the pool room <laughs> like on Tuesday nights playing in these handicap tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of guys that were probably smoking weed and all this. <laughs> right, right. I'm not letting my son in there with a bunch of degenerate gamblers. <laughs> right. But I got, to, I got to know quite a few of the guys, and they were all pretty good guys. So. Well, that's cool. You know, you, your mama obviously put faith in you and make the right decisions. And yeah. So, you know what? Okay. Yeah, I never had any issues. So. That's good. That's and then good. I got to know the owner, and we started going to some of the other events. He had, like, some junior events in uh, Jacksonville and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. He bought a van and had a bed. He put a bed in the back of the van. So me and his son would sleep in the bed while he was driving us to the terrace. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, how old are you now? I'm 31. 31. Okay. Yeah. So you're the same age. Uh, you're just a couple years younger than Justin, my son. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. That's cool. That's cool. So I don't necessarily – did you play um, – I'm trying to think of the gentleman's name. He was a, I think he was a, he was a police officer in uh, Orlando, and he was running a junior program out of like, uh, uh, it was pro billiards when it turned into Orlando Billiard Center. Um, that's how Justin kind of got into it. Um, that's like how I met like Denny Singletary, mm-hmm. Billy Burke. Um, yep. Were you playing in that at all? No, I no. didn't. Okay. I started a little late as a junior. I didn't really start playing a lot until about I was about 17 years old. No. Yeah, Justin was about 15, so. It really wasn't any good until I was about 17, 18 years old. Okay. Because so. okay. I was going to say, I don't know. I don't, I mean, and that's how I can say that's how I met some of the younger players, like Trey, Trey Jankowski, mm-hmm. you know, um, and they they all that crew played in that junior tour kind of thing. Yeah, the, last, the last junior event I played, uh, Shane McMahon was in playing in the tournament. Okay. Well, he's a yeah. tremendous player. Right. Yeah. And, of course, he won the tournament. So. Yeah. Um, was he a junior national champ? Um, I, I think so. The, I think so. I'm not 100% sure about okay. that. So. I know, like, uh, Justin Hall, Justin Bergman, uh, John Moore, in their era, they were junior champions. Yeah. Um, that was when there was, it wasn't like a league; it was like a national mm-hmm. junior program. So uh, that's cool, yeah. You know, and, and it, it really um, pool is just such a cool thing. I mean, I, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if it wasn't for pool. Yeah, so I met a lot of great people. Through a pool, lot of great sure. people, you know. 
and uh, it's good that like you're smart enough you didn't get caught up in the you know just like everything there's a good side and bad side to, yeah, to things and so good that, that you, uh, you had a good head on your shoulders stay on the right side the right path in life and that's why you're still successful and you know, in good shape and, and alive. Exactly. And really is a, a great game. Though. It's really turned around a lot in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. it, I, I tell people, I said, it, it kind of reminds me of Harley Davidson. You know, when people say, oh, you're at Harley, you know, back in the day, it's like you're thinking uh, chains and bikers and tattoos. And now you say Harley, you're like, oh, you're an attorney, you're a doctor? What do you do for, you know? <laughs> And so it really changed. It's like, you, you know, some people still, oh, smoky pool hall. I'm like, mm -hmm. um, no, there's no smoking. Uh, they're very family oriented. Yeah. You know, like I say, with all these junior programs and these kids, and it's it's not what you think it is. I mean, not to say that there aren't th still those elements. Same with Harley. I mean, there's still the biker crews, but billiards has really turned you know, that stigmatism around a lot, but not everybody knows about it. Mm. It's cool they have all those matches in the matchroom sport and yeah. streaming on the, uh, the DAZN app. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, now when you turn on pool, you're seeing that, you know, they're all dressed with their sponsors and they're dressed mm -hmm. nicely. Kind of like back in the old days, you know, I mean, in the 60s, they're, they're wearing tuxes and, you know, mm -hmm. which is, I wouldn't want to play like that, but it's it looks professional. I mean, exactly, they were, yeah. you know, Back when men used to dress very clean and daily routine, they're wearing suits and ties. And, uh, yeah, you know. I'm, I'm a bit. I really like the dress code enforcement in a lot of the tournaments. You know, living in Florida, my thing is collared shirt. I'm okay if you wear shorts as long as they're not gym shorts. You know, if they're like Dockers or right. you know cargo shorts. Um, collared shirt, closed shoes. You know, and I'm, and that's good with me. Yeah, you know, yeah. For, for what we do. Yeah, just look presentable. Yeah. Overall, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to see you in t-shirts, and I'm not a big uh, hats. I'm on, on the cusp with. I don't want to see it backwards. Yeah. You know, if you're wearing a ball cap, okay. You know, wear it frontwards the way it's supposed to be worn. Yeah, yeah I agree. But I prefer. Just like you say, if you want to try to be more professional, don't wear the hat. You know. But again, the people that are doing that, these are they're not professionals. They're they're amateurs, they work for a living. Yeah. You know, so it's their it's their normal attire, so I'm okay with it. Uh, I might have called our match. I got to text my team. Sometime. No worries, buddy. I'm <laughs> so thankful for you to come in here and hang out and, and spend some time on the mic with people. We were, uh, I was out getting my butt whooped by Joselito and his crew. <laughs> yeah, Joselito's kind of my rival a little bit. So <laughs> he's, a, what, he's a super nice guy, a super great ball maker. And yeah, he plays real solid. Yeah, he does. So you guys have a little history of uh, doing battle. Yeah. Well, um, we played in the Iron City. Uh, tournament in uh, Alabama. That's a beautiful room. Yes. Birmingham, well, Alabama. The craziest matchup is this guy comes up to me. I don't know if he owns the place. I can't remember his name. He said, like, hey, you want to play some cheap sets of nine ball, whatever? I'm like, sure. Hey, we'll put it on this table. And there were three and a half oh, inch yeah. pockets. And I'm like, does the ball even fit? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got hustled bad in that game. <laughs> There's two tables in that room that are super tight like that. Yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, so I was I played Joselito on the loser side. I, I was in the money, but... um. Kind of battled back and forth. I hooked myself. I made a good kick, and then I made a jump combo. It ran out. Oh, nice. And then I broke and ran hill hill down to the eight and hung the eight. Oh, uh, that hurts. It's, I mean, it was a missable shot, but it's not a shot I should ever miss on the bar table. And then I played him in the 700 under Fargo event out in Zingali's. And then I played a good set and beat him like seven to two. So, oh, nice. Yeah, we kind of battled back and forth a little bit. Yeah. It, it's good to have those rivals because they keep you on, honest and on your toes and push you to say, you know what, I can't slack off because yeah. I, I really don't want to lose to this guy, even though he's a nice guy. You know? right. It's like I just don't want to lose to that person. Exactly. I get it. 
you know, I've played Justin so many times, I don't think I've ever beat him, which isn't really funny, but I've never had a problem with beating just about anybody, but Justin has always had my numbers. <laughs> just kind of funny. Uh, well, yeah, it's, and it, isn't it weird sometimes? You, I think a lot of people, you, you could be the better player, but there's always that one guy that's not as good as you, but for some reason you're always like, man, this guy just, <laughs> something about that one person that just gives me the hardest time. Like I beat Anthony Crosby the first two times I played him, and I beat Mike Davis like the last two times I beat him, and then Justin just drills my nuts and every time I play him. <laughs> that's, you know, it's, it's just weird like how that goes sometimes, you know. It's just, but that's the nature of, of life, you know. It's just yeah, sometimes yeah. you have, somebody has your number and sometimes you have their number. So. But it's kind of cool to see Justin win the, the tournament in Singapore. Because I, I don't know how many matches he won on the loser side. But I think he lost his, like, second or third. Yeah, he had to won, like, nine or ten. <laughs> and there was race to five That's at the Temple. That's tough. Right? Yeah. So. That's tough, yeah. He came in second about six or seven years ago in that event, uh, losing to, um, oh, Jeff from North Carolina. Jeff... Oh, his name escapes me right is now. Abernathy? Yes, Jeff Abernathy. Yep. Yeah, he's a solid player. Yeah, he's a real solid Maybe player. Not. Yeah. yeah. His team won the uh, Masters event out in Vegas. You want to talk about a tough team? I mean, a tough venue? That Masters Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, it is. I went out one year, and I had a decent team. I mean, I'm the wink wink on the team, and uh, but I had Christian Tile and Corey Penrod. Mm hmm. I mean, at one time, Corey was one of the top bar table players in the country. Mm -hmm. And Chris Gentile plays pretty solid. Yeah, he's solid. And we got tortured. Wow. <laughs> they, it was like two matches. Yeah, Kyle Bovis' team, him and uh, Ray Linares, they went like three and out in the tournament. I mean, Which is really surprising. So that tells you how strong that tournament is. Yeah, our team got ninth or 12th, and it was like 326 teams. So, so that's impressive. Yeah. It's a great venue. I like it. It was the only time I'd ever been out there for, for Masters and stuff. But... Uh, that's probably one of the toughest league tournaments. It has to be the toughest league tournament in the country. Yeah. All right. Well, they call it. All right. Match, Wesley, so. thank you so much for hanging yep. out. Good luck. Yeah. All right. All right we'll Good talk to you later, man. Appreciate it. You got it. Wesley White, everybody. Super knowledgeable. Awesome guy. And so uh, hang tight. We've got another match coming up. And I'm going to get some team names. And we'll uh, figure out who's who. And Get it going.
dollars. <laughs> All right, guys, we got uh, You Got Action playing out of Rax Billiards in Sanford, Florida. Pool Hall Junkies playing out of Brews and Cues in Englewood, Florida. So uh, they're just kind of getting warmed up and settled in. Should be some good matchup. Uh, I've seen a couple of these guys play, and it's play pretty sporty. So kind of looking forward to this one. Should be a lot of fun. Guys, we're getting underway. Looks like you got action won the flip, so they'll start off with the break. Front three tables 60, 61, and 62. So if you know these guys, you want to hang out and watch all three matches, go to YouTube. You can open up all three of them. these guys you want to tell some stories throw them under the bus love to hear it here we go with the break oh he's gonna come up dry yeah, he's got the uh, he can start with the 10 the six big cluster there in the middle we get the 114 four eight then on the Towards the side rail, the 9, 13, 7. Those are your problem balls right out of the gate coming from the break. That makes it a little tough. <coughs> so you want to evaluate and see which one you look better. He's going to start off with the 5, which is a tough shot. But he, he's liking his uh, odds if he makes it. Yeah, he was nice on the two, so he had, he had a game plan, but let's see if that one ball it's the first thing he just looked at. One passes that fourteen and I think it's the four ball next to the eight, so options here. 
open table. Now it is legal to pocket a ball. And that's what he's doing. I think he called safe. He's going to pocket the ball, keep all behind the six. And that is legal. You have to sit, call safe, or just call a different pocket. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll just say uh, five in the side and shoot it in the corner. But uh, that is a legal shot. Nice hit. APA not legal because slop counts. This is BNEA Valley National Rules. Call your pocket. Doesn't matter how once it, you roll around the table, you can hit every ball and cushion on the table. As long as it goes in the pocket you called, that counts. Um, open after the break and that means if you make all the solids but you want to shoot stripes you can you know it does not make what you take if you scratch on the break and make the eight ball it is not a win or loss you have the option to spot the eight and shoot the rack as it is or re-rack and re-break if you're shooting the eight ball for the win and scratch, and the eight ball does not fall, it's not a loss of game. It's just ball in hand for your opponent. If you make the eight and scratch, that is a loss of game. Making the eight and scratching. So. There's the general portion of your rules there. That was a nice little safety. The only thing you can do is nip the three ball and hopefully not give up a shot.
get the, uh, the guy sitting right underneath the camera to lose his brake stick. Looking at the <laughs> Looking at his stick. Probably gonna play a safety here. He was trying to spin that freeze up on the 11, but uh, actually turned out all right. That 313 because he doesn't have a shot. And if he opens it up, he knows that um, his chances of winning from there are not going to be good. Oh, well, that's a foul. And he opened it up. Now his percentage just, just went way down. ball is your trouble ball here so I don't know if you can choose it in the side pocket where he's standing and I, know that's I don't remember his name but I know he was a pretty pretty savvy shooter there pretty smart so I expect him to make some good choices here There, but maybe the 13 really was a tough shot into the side. Didn't like it. Gonna play the 11. Got himself into a little bit of a jam here. Trying to break out the three, he didn't give himself quite a great shot to really work with. This is Team You Have Action out of Sanford. Rex Poor in Sanford. I don't remember this gentleman's name, but I've seen him in several tournaments. He's a, he's a solid player.
have to stretch on this one a little bit. Jacked up over the six, or try to come around the side. Climb up on the table. Looking for the bridge now. Seven in the side. I thought he would hit it a little softer, so he had a better angle on the six and then kind of get so close to it. But I don't really see any issues for him here. He should be able to make the six, pop out for the one. He may want. He could possibly just draw back a little bit, play the one in the upper left hand corner where he's standing. farther down. And he did. Now usually they have a patch on the table. This table, I guess they don't have it, so they're just going to call the pocket. Boy, gentlemen, pull. Nice shot. Well done by uh, you got action. That's a 10-4 win if you're not familiar with the score system. 10 points for the win and for the loser, however many balls get pocketed. The most you can make losing is seven. And 10 for the win. And these matches move along really quickly because uh, they're using three tables. A lot of times they only use two, and they still move along quickly. But the three tables, really, you're back to back to back playing a lot of times. break but he didn't get the uh, reaction he wanted. Came up dry. And 12 and 9 is a cluster. 3, 13. Those are your problem balls right there on the spot. 7 ball by the 8. Potential problem. Solids are the probably better luck. But you gotta contend with that 3 ball. Like the next table was a big win for those guys. They're pretty happy about it. That's uh, pool hall junkies. All right, he's going to take stripes. It looks like he's got some issues there. Clutter's there, and I don't think he had like a real good open shot to take. in the 11. We'll play a safe here. So he's looking to 
Woodbridge and take a tough cut on the 11 here. Wow, he hit that ball pretty damn good, too. He didn't make it, but he didn't miss by much. I think he caught the corner of the point. And he didn't give up anything either, so. Called a combo, drilled it like it was a hanger. That was a great shot. I told you this guy can play. Six ball. We might have the angle to open up to three now. Oh. Did not have the angle going the other way to the bottom. We'll shoot the four ball, but he's gonna have to use a two to get to the three. He's probably gonna come up two rails for the seven. Um, the that side ran into the cluster. Now he's really gonna. He's digging himself a hole here. He can't get to the three ball now off the two. He's in trouble. Beautiful. <clears throat> Especially if the three goes by the 13. I haven't seen the bridge use this much on the bar table since I don't know when. Since the eight year old and under juniors. How's the speed? It's pretty good for the one. Seven ball still is an issue. You play the one off the bottom rail, off the 14, open up the pocket, you have to hit it with it inside. Try to bring back across towards the side pocket so that you can shoot the seven. Or you can draw it down past the side pocket. He's doing the inside just like that. And you just have to be careful when you shoot the seven. You have to be careful on the speed for the eight that you don't knock the eight ball in. Yeah, you just cut it down the rail. How do you hit it? Oh my goodness. That was a hell of a shot. That was a hell of a shot. All right, well, we're going to see some safety play here in a few minutes. He might shoot the 14 and come around. But getting out of this rack with that 8 sitting on top of the 11 and 12 is going to be difficult. The nine ball is the shot to get the cluster open. See if he can, if he can get position for it. Side rail, don't make it, roll it down, bounce it off. Into the eight, try to get the cue ball down on the bottom rail. 
to play safe. I don't know if you have any angle for that. But that way, that nine sitting in the pocket to use the other balls to uh, shoot the combo and open it up. this and tries to break it up, he has a chance of knocking the eight in. No. The eight was a little offline from the 11 and 12, but. I'll tell you what, that was a gutsy shot. I mean, a gutsy shot. So now what he's gonna probably do is kick. Try to make the 11. It's soft kicking and it's soft just to make contact, make a legal hit, and then uh, let your opponent try to kick out of it. <coughs> hit the wrong side of the 12. I like the attempt. I'm, I'm not uh, faulting him at all for his hell of a try. But that eight ball is going to make it tough for him regardless. It was a fun game to watch, though. A little bit of back and forth. I tell you, that guy made a great out to hang the eight ball, though. Team Pool Hall Junkies with the victory there in that table.
Stripes are looking real good here. Shoots the 10, floats down for the 11, for the 13, 14, 8. If he has to, he can hit him with some follow, come to the end rail and back up. Just so he can hit the shot with a little confidence and a little pace. Oh, it, he popped up and overcut it. That's that shot that can haunt you for a while. We've all had him. Because he knows he was out from there. Alright, so... This guy has a little bit of problem with the 4-7. 5-6 is a little bit tied up too also, so... If he can get good on the 2 for the what would be the bottom right here... Then he's good for the 5. He's trying to come up. That's a nice break in. And he got a reward for a nice shot on the seven straight up the table. The two passes of the 13 in the side, he's in real good shape. because you can get ahead of yourself. Uh, we've seen p people play the wrong players before. So you can, sometimes you got to take a step back. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes you got to regroup and uh, not get too far ahead of yourself. Shoot to the uh, 11, stop for the 13. Back up for the 14. Unless he has an angle to go to the bottom rail between the 4 and 10. Uh oh. We've all been there. I do that on a regular basis. Shoot the two ball here. So you don't get good. Maybe shoot a five six combo. It's not a hanger. It might be lined up pretty solid. I don't want to shoot combos if I don't have to. Well, nice. Unless. You can't make the five or the two. There's a possibility. Maybe he has to shoot a two five combo to the corner. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, he's just on that funny line where he's going to play the combo. It looks pretty close to being lined up. No reward. No reward. Tougher and tougher. 
Oh, back cut that into the two where his opponent's sitting and come around the table. I don't know if he can get in there enough to bank it. He's going to call. He's probably more playing a safe, trying to get the cue ball behind the eight. Called the two in the side. Oh, he was get, get out of town. Oh, oh God. How sick was that if he made that? I don't know if he was actually trying to kick it or not, but that was almost a ESPN highlight shot. Chance to re redeem himself here. Tough shot on the 13. Possibly going to clip the two if he goes to the 13 inside. He goes for the 13 in the corner. Position on the eight is tough. All right, in the side. Does he give his opponent? He does to leave the oh, that's the worst thing he can do. Leave that two ball right by the side. And it just hurts. I like drawing this two rails. Got him rail. Oh he was I thought he had an angle. I didn't know he could hit it straight on and hold it like that. That was a good shot. Continues. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I feel I feel their pain for both of them because these guys are run out players a lot of times. And then you get this five inning game, you're like, what the hell just happened here? They both play better than what we're they're showing us. thing or another, you know, these guys, they're competing for, you know, pride, but they're having fun. One loser draw, they're, you know, they're shaking hands, they're laughing, having a good time. That's really the goal here is to have fun. If you're out there in the chat, hit us up. Give me something to talk about. Tell me what's for dinner. Give me some good recipes. Something. Getting lonely over here. Team events are tough. I do have my number one sidekick in the world with me. But she's not one to talk.
Oh, Relux uh, is off to buy us some Pizza Hut now. Generous. I was really hoping somebody was going to bring us uh, you know, a filet with a lobster tail. That would be you know, pretty generous of somebody. Anybody out there in Streamland want to bring me some a nice filet? With a, maybe a one pound, one and a half pound lobster tail with some drawn butter and, you know. Something on the break. Two eights, a uh, little bit of a cluster. Two does go. Five and eleven. A little bit of a cluster in the middle. the uh, overhead camera. Yeah, the overhead is a nice option. That really gives you a good perspective of the table sometimes. And then we also you can uh, scan in our logo. Or we use the logo for the West Coast Challenge. That's also a nice option. Raudini, where are you checking in from? Appreciate you. because you got the two one surrounding it. Rao Dini checking California. Are you anywhere near uh, hard times in Sacramento? out in California. That is no joke. He might get there. He might have enough angle to get that 12 away from the 5 and shoot it in the side.
see, that's the problem. I wonder if we can come around three rails. I guess the 11 passes the 3. Nice shot. Looks like he almost has an angle to go into that 1 2. I wonder if the 2. Um, if the 8 passes the 2 in the upper corner, that's exactly what he was just looking at. Rodini uh, out in the LA area by the Rose Bowl. Very cool. So, what's the uh, pull action down by you right now? Oh my god, this is a freaking textbook. This this is running out his highlight. He has come with like five awesome shots and got perfect on every one of them. Just has to be careful he doesn't scratch off the sixth. Prettiest run I've seen in a while. That was a that was a nice nice run out, man. He really that was impressive. Kind of a handful of just crazy good shots. Good shooting there, mister. I might want to get his autograph. Once we get down to the last couple games here, um, between these two match, uh, teams, getting to the nitty gritty here. Let's find out what's, try to get a score update for you. See, how, see what the score is.
Match is over. Uh, Pool Hall Junkies from Englewood came out victorious, but it came down to uh, the nitty gritty. There's only, I think, one game left. But uh, once it's mathematically over, match is over. So, good shooting. That was, uh, it was a good match with some really good play. That one out was super sick. So, hang tight. Good time to refresh. Good time to get online, order your uh, billiard outfitters apparel. Might as well look good when you're playing pool. Co-advantage if you need some hired help at work. Don't forget Last Call Tavern. If you're in the Bradenton, Sarasota area, you need uh, some work done. Certainly uh, call them Hughes Solutions. So hang tight. We'll have some other matches back for you. Rahadini enjoys the young fellows yesterday. Oh man, we yeah, Terrell and uh, Kevin, what a great matchup that was. So, appreciate you. Hang tight, be right back with you. Uh, Rodini. So what's the what's the pool room that you're hanging out with uh, over there near LA? What's what's the heavy hitters? I got some friends in Sacramento at hard times. That's why I asked if you were up in that area. Oscar Dominguez's room, of course. <sighs> but talking about yesterday's match, um, Terrell Morgan and Kevin Delgado. The two finalists in the men's B division, nine ball, and that was a hell of a match. That was a hell of a match. Uh, Terrell won the hot seat over Kevin. Kevin comes back, wins his match over Orlando Ortiz. Has to beat Terrell twice. Beats him 4 nothing the first set. Boy, the second set, it goes hill, hill, battle back and forth. Kevin's running out, has a tough shot, hangs it up. Terrell gets his wits about him, pulls out the win. But what a match that was. So, yes, uh, Rodini, that was a lot of fun. So they're going to get us another match here shortly, so why they do that, uh, I think we're going to go take a restroom break, get a drink, you know, uh, check my makeup and my hair, and, uh, you know, all the good stuff. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Good time for you guys to uh, do the same. If you need to let the dog out, whatever it takes. Don't forget you got laundry to throw in the dryer. So uh, hang tight. This is Gary G with Extreme Pool Challenge. We're live in Kissimmee, Florida. 
the 2022 West Coast Challenge. Over a thousand participants playing, so look into it if you haven't been here before. You want to play? Check us out. I want to shout out to Jerry's Family Billiards in Pasadena, Q's and Alhambra. Very cool. Well, give them a shout. Tell them to turn us on. I know you got uh, Danny Bush from POV. He does a great job streaming tournaments. I think he's in your area, Southern California. And, uh, you know, give him a shout out too. He does a good job. So, guys, we'll be right back. Hang tight. Thanks for watching. And we'll get some more matches back at you here in a few minutes. Thank you.
las cámaras ya no están funcionando, digamos la llave que las cámaras no están funcionando, porque yo no se caga por eso. Aquí está frío, pero. Sí, aquí está frío.
Hey guys, uh, Gary G. We're going to get another match going back here in a few minutes. No reason to take off unless you just uh, top off uh, your cocktails and uh, freshen up the popcorn bowl. You know? Hang out. We'll be right back with you in a few minutes. As the teams are getting in here, warming up. We'll see if we can find out the team names and uh, maybe where they're from. <clears throat> so we have a little insight on who their, uh, you know, who the players are. If you're in the chat and you know the players, certainly uh, fill us in on them. And throw them under the bus, man. Give me some dirt. Let us know the skinny on what's going on and who they are. How they dogged you out sometime, whatever happened. Always like to know what's going on. So hang tight, and I'll be right back once we get the uh, team names and locations where their home location is. Alright guys, 
We're off and running. We have Your Fault playing out of the Legend Sports Bar out of Naples. And Eight Balls in Iraq playing out of Mikey's Place in Plant City. So this ought to be good. It looks like Your Fault won the flip, so they're going to be the home team. They all break first. Using the first three tables here. So if you want to go on YouTube, tables 60, 61, and 62. That is our uh, matchup. And this uh, should go pretty quick. These are these are your couple of your good teams here. So uh, yeah. we're going to see some pretty good play here. Is this the uh, gold division or the silver? Yeah, I don't know either. It, it's hard to tell because, uh, you know, you have some – Pretty good players in the silver division that you know, like how they you know, sneak into that division. You know, they fall on the cusp of uh, you know that borderline. Shane Bannon says, hopefully it's a good nail biter. We've had some really good nail biters so far. So come down to the last game, and it gets in a little intense, and you feel for that one guy that just just glitches himself a little, comes up a quarter inch short for the set and loses the game and everybody's like oh and you can hear it. it's like oh, oh, oh you know you feel the tension everybody and it's like oh shh, man yeah our match came down the wire we were down by 15 two matches left or two reps left and i think we lost by like five points or something yeah, that's pretty tight then i mean if you can get it down to the last game within a couple of balls you know it's a good match you know yeah we had one of those matches uh we were down pretty big, and uh, we, we snuck it back in the last round to sneak it out to win by two. Oh wow! And they had two, the, but they were spotting us ten points because they had two masters on the team. Oh okay. Um, you know Dave Singleton. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dave Singleton, John Gore, Brian McBride. Oh, well, that's uh, good team. Kenny. John Gore plays really good. Yeah, that, that, I mean, I mean, like, well, John Gore and David are, are uh, both your masters. Mm -hmm. David McBride, when he's playing, he falls into a master category, but nonetheless, uh, he hasn't been playing much. Oh, it's uh, Wesley White. They play out of uh, Q's Billiards in Marietta, Georgia. I'm from Florida, though. I'm the one the, uh, I won the eight ball uh, singles. All right, we're off and running. Should be a good one. Uh, Bill Yester, Tim Barron did. He came in second in the uh, men's A division nine ball tournament. True double elimination. He won the first set. Came up a little short in the second set. But yeah, played a hell of a match. Yeah. And lost to David's on my team. Yeah, lost to Wesley. Uh, and I have Wesley White in the group with me here. And uh, lost to uh, David Cantrell. Yeah, you could tell fatigue really got to them in that match for sure. You know, the long days, grinding, it's, you know, yeah. it's the nature of the beast. I know the tournament directors probably haven't been getting much sleep either. So. They do not. <laughs> Kia Hughes and Kathy King and, and their staff, I feel for, I mean, I'm with them, you know, just long, grueling hours. Right. So, but you know what? We do it for the love of the game. We have a great time. Couldn't give it up. <clears throat> this is a. I forget. I wonder if this is a Edgar Lopez, I think. I'm not 100%. No, it is not. Edgar plays out of Palm Beach. And they look very similar. And good, both of them are pretty good bull players. He was stretching. Yeah, that's a tricky shot. He yeah. Reach for it. And he clipped the eight with the, the stick, but really didn't go anywhere. Yeah, Tim played a great match. And so, David, obviously, it was a great match. Mm -hmm. And it really, I mean, they played for the hot seat, so you know what? It was kind of justified that they played again in the finals. Yeah, no shame in second, for sure. Not out of 150 or 189 players yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah. No, that's tremendous. Tremendous. 
Bill, we certainly appreciate you. So here he's got to find a way to get on the seven. Um, I don't, okay, it goes. It does go up past in the top corner, past the eleven. So he might just play position from there. Using the four, probably. I wonder if the five goes by the one here. That's yeah. If it does, then it makes it a little bit easier to get to that work that seven ball. He doesn't waste a whole lot of time once he gets makes his decision. He's down in his quick tempo once he sees the shot, shoots the shot. But you know, he's thinking about it right now. One, two, and here we go. Bang. Hmm. Well, that's gonna be a little uh, difficult now. Tied up to two nine. We might have to draw back into it using the one. Also straight in. Well, maybe, I guess the seven goes in the other corner. Yeah, it does. Okay, you got a good angle here just to draw into it. Well, Shane Bando, we certainly hope. Uh, I kind of thought that was you, Shane. That was a nice breakout shot. Nice to come with a shot there to make it. Yeah, making it seems pretty simple, but getting on the eight is going to... Do you just call a sign? From here it looks like it doesn't go. No. Unless he's going off the 15. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, he was playing off the 15, yeah. and that was a great shot. If he makes it, he's dead on the eight. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. You just uh, hit the 15 a little full. I think he needed to hit it harder because it looked like... The the top took. Mm -hmm. so you need to have it stunned into the pocket. Well, Shane, we hope you make it out here next year, and we'd love to see you duke in the singles, as long as you're not playing me. Is he playing it off the rail and off the ten, or is he playing the combo? Yeah, I think he's playing it in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, good shot. He didn't get. He didn't draw back as much as he probably wanted to. But he, he didn't want to uh, leave the two in case it, it hung either. So he was kind of playing a safe two-way shot there. His. Uh, Kind of pushed the stroke there. He was almost steering it a little bit because, you know, when you're when, when you're just not a hundred percent, but you're like, I gotta shoot it, but you're like, oh, I'm kind of hesitant. So yeah, you want to steer the ball. You have to have it soft. To try to hold it get on the twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have considered just playing safe off the twelve on that shot. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But you almost hate to leave. Uh, you know, yeah. you got a ball hanging by the side pocket. Just kick it in somehow. Something That's silly happens. You're right. like, how? Why did I do that? <laughs> Even though it's the right shot. Okay, you can see the edge you can cross bank it. Stick it under the 15. It's a really tough shot, though. Yeah, it will thing. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. Uh, yeah, that's just a tough shot. Yeah, but he kind of got away yeah, with it here. Yeah, he might have got him a little tough. He got a good safety here because you just roll up and touch the 10. Two doesn't go really. Yeah, he might even be able to just roll behind the 15. Yeah, I mean, if you're really feeling confident that you have the touch. But anywhere over there, he can't really shoot the two. Okay, yeah. he's finished. I mean, if you're feeling offensive, I like this here. Yeah, just draw it one rail for the, uh, the mm -hmm. 12 ball. You got to really, you got to put a good pace on it, though. Watch the scratch. Yeah, hit that good. 
Oh my god. A lot of people don't hit that with enough, and you hit it a little bit firmer just for that reason, so you don't yep. get into that scratch zone. Yep. He's okay. He's got the 15 as a relief ball or the 12. <laughs> Ooh, he's in the driver's seat. Should have no problem here. Just a little bit of angle so you're not stuck on the rail. Yeah. They want to get straight. They want to get straight. <clears throat> I know he was jacked up. He's probably a little hesitant about uh, you know hitting with a you know firm stroke. Should talk a little bit and go forward two rails. I think he's just gonna hit it soft and take his chances. Yeah. Yep. I don't think anyone does. Not for the cash. I'm not a fan of it, but that's you, got to. you gotta take your medicine. That's where you left yourself. Stay down on the shot. And follow through. Don't move your head until after the ball is gone. You didn't miss it by much, but it's a good leave. Keep on the bottom rail. Leaving a tough shot on the two here. Mm -mm. Yeah, they kind of jumped up a little bit there. Yeah. You know, it was a, it was a good shot there. Instead of that, it was banking the two. Back to the corner where the patch is. If you miss it, you're blocking the eight ball. If you make it, you got a shot on the eight ball. It's kind of a two way. Um, I mean, the shot that he shot, that's the shot, the right shot to shoot, but if you're not confident, the other shot, the bank is like a two way safety valve. I think a lot of these shots, it's better just to hit them firmly because it's really tough to shoot accurately and just rolling the ball in. Oh, Some, yeah. Sometimes you have to on the ball table. But no, uh, yeah, I 100% hit the ball with confidence, hit the ball. Like on this shot, I don't even mind just firing it with bottom right and going into the second diamond on the third rail. You oh, just, absolutely. You just hit it a lot more accurate. Because so, here you got to avoid scratching on the side. And the yeah, I mean, that's fine, but... I like hitting out with, with a little more pace and a little more lower draw and coming two rails out of the corner. The way you hit it, he made it, no problem, but you know what? You hit it soft like that, you have a chance of scratching the side. That cue ball is not that far off. Yeah, I always compare it to putting in golf. Like putting downhill is just so difficult. Mm -hmm. Putting uphill, it's easy. Right. You know, just kind of let your stroke out a little bit. Yeah, when you have to hit it with a little bit of energy, you, you're going to hit it much truer. It's going to roll much truer. When you're trying to baby it and steer it and soft, mm -hmm. you have that a tendency to... Yeah, it's real easy to decelerate. And absolutely. Yeah, it's really tough. Yep. That's Francisco Diaz on the middle table. <laughs> yep. These are all on it instead of stroking it. Shane's our online commentator. <laughs> and he's been calling it all weekend with us, doing a great job. We certainly appreciate him. Holding down Bradenton for him. Francisco Diaz on the middle table. I was just saying, uh, top tier player. For a while and for a took a time off he actually like broke his leg or something mm. like two years ago and had to take quite a bit of time off man he plays a real good real solid player Boy, he hit that solid. Mm -hmm. He got that whole rack down. dancing. Came up dry. I 
any trouble balls here? What do you like? What's your suit? I mean, they look like they're all pretty open. Um, I'm taking solids. Yeah, I think you could just shoot the six, roll up for the two, on the side. Yeah, depending on the angle on the two, you can either work with the four or three. Yeah, I think you take solid just because of where the one seven is. Uh oh. 14 when he goes in the other corner. I mean, yeah. you probably still get there, but. I, I feel he rolled the cue all about eight inches too far on that yeah, anyway. Yeah, he did. Unless he's straight in on the four, but nonetheless. So, yeah, I think he's going to shoot the four here. Probably. All right. Yeah, this is an eight balls in a rack. They shoot out of Mikey's place in Plant City, Florida. Yeah, he kind of rushed the he, stroke. I there. was going to say, yeah, he got down and shot that kind of quick, didn't he? Yeah, he was just quick on his backswing. You kind of have to pause on your backswing usually. Transition a lot better. Yeah, that's a funny conversation. So I was just talking to somebody about that not uh, a couple weeks ago. So Jeremy Jones is not a fan of the pause. Mm -hmm. He says he feels like it disrupts his timing and his thought processes. You know, it's you want to kind of keep that fluid motion. So I guess, it's, again, I, I use that expression, not everybody wants pepperoni on their pizza. It's, it's really about a personal preference, what works best for you. But it's hard to argue with success when you see so many great players that take that pause. I mean, and, and going back to the 80s and 90s, Buddy Hall was the biggest one for a long time where you really noticed it. He had a nice, one of the prettiest, smoothest strokes ever. Never changed his tempo but had a, that deliberate pause. But when I heard that Jeremy was not a fan of it, I was a little surprised. But I'm like, okay, I, I get it. Yeah, but I think everyone naturally does it. Most pool players pause on towards the, the cue ball and then they go back and forward. Snooker players pause on their backswing and then mm -hmm. go forward. That's right. That's like right. Chris Melling's a good example of that. He really pauses on his backswing a lot. Yeah, there's some players that have... Or Shane, he'll, he'll pause at the cue ball and then pull back and go forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's players that pause at the cue ball and on the back swing, and then there's players that don't really pause on either one. Anthony McGlino, he pauses like five times. And, he, you know, it, it's amazing how good he plays and he's got that hitch in his back swing. Right. A little, it's almost like a hiccup. But how do you argue with success? Right. The guy plays fantastic. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't play this year. This is the first year I haven't seen him here in mm. quite a long time. Kyle Bova didn't show up. Jason Sherman didn't show up. Chris yeah, Daly didn't show that, up. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good players here not making it this year. So. I mean, I get it. It's tough to take work off. It is. It really is. A lot of them have families and married and all that. So. Well, you know. You can only play pool so many major tournaments. Like, see, it's it's not just a Saturday and Sunday. It's you're, you're taking uh, half the week off or more. Yeah. So you got to pick and choose. You only get so many tournaments uh, well, that you can get away to go to. I'm kind of glad they stayed home. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you doing here? He's in a tight spot. <coughs> He's pulling out the jump here. <coughs> yeah, he's in a little bit of a pickle here. Yeah, he's probably yeah. not even a full ball between the 13 and 15 to go to the 4. Yeah, Nonetheless, easy. not easy, right? Oh, yeah, jumps are never easy. But I think he's going to try to play the four in the corner. His position is usually natural when you're straight in like that. But. Mm hmm. Yeah, if you make good contact and you can hit it straight, and you just follow down a little bit. Made good contact. If he can't see the 12, he might have got, made it tough on his opponent. 
Yeah, it depends on if the 12 goes in the side. No, yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he definitely can see it. And, and he doesn't waste any time pulling the trigger. <laughs> Probably kill it for the 11 or come back out to the middle for the 15. Yeah, I like just following it and going two rails back for the uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Just like yeah, that. Just like that. And even if you get bad on it, you got the 11. So. Mm -hmm. then you won't even be able to play the 14 or 10. Yeah. No. Either way, he's got options. He's still fine, just roll it in. Yeah. That's the beauty of 8 ball for a while anyway. You got a lot of options mm -hmm. <laughs> until you run out. <laughs> He doesn't waste any time pulling the trigger once he gets down. Mm -hmm. Takes about a stroke and a half, and he's like, all right, good, one, two, bang. So that was a better stroke. He kind of paused a little bit. Right. Right. He's like, cue ball get away from him. Yeah, on that shot, I, th I think you go to the bottom rail and back up. It's a lot easier to control the cue ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but he might bank this on the side. He's cutting it. Okay. Yeah, it must not be as steep as it looks. Nice shot. That was a great shot. Watch the scratch. Watch the scratch. He's okay. Yeah, he shoot on the side. And Francisco on the middle table with a nice uh, run out there. Let's check the stroke. One, two, bang. He does have the little pause there. Yeah. Those shots are always missable though on the side like that. Especially when you're kind of on the rail. Yeah, never easy. Now shooting on a valley from that angle, I hate that shot. Yeah, puts the valley there a little bit, <laughs> a little more generous. Yeah. You can roll up on top of the two and play safe, and yeah. Or you can actually come off the right side of the two with some spin and bring the cue ball down, under back behind the three. It's actually it's mm -hmm. pretty natural. If he wants to be aggressive and, and go offensive, he can actually cut the two in with a little, mm -hmm. just a pinch of it inside. You don't want to go too far. Or you could load it up and try to get to the side rail. Yeah, and this is a tough behind shot. the three. Yeah, he's stretching too. I might try to cut it and just go straight into the eight and just kind of hope you don't make the eight. But. Loaded up with a lot inside. Oh. He's going to get away with it. That wasn't really a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it could, let's just say the two ball went in and he's there. He's got a nice safety. He just punt the three to the bottom rail, roll behind the four, and, you know. He's looking at back from the three in the corner. No, he's but shooting at the eight. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Never mind. There's no way he can cut that ball into the side from there. Yeah, he's going to kick at it. it right. But when he got down, he was stroking like he was trying to see the edge of it. There's no way he can cut that ball in. Yeah, Federer probably just jumps it in the side. <laughs> yeah, Federer can jump and uh, back cut it into the pocket he's standing in. Good hit. Good contest. Got to force your opponent to make something. Yeah, from there, that's all you can do. <clears throat> oh no. Yeah. That hurts. He seems kind of indecisive when I struck there. He kind of paused and then paused again. Kind yeah. of accelerated. Yeah. The worst thing is you, you start thinking. And the worst thing you can ever do is thinking. <laughs> yeah. Mind is a terrible thing. Next to a woman in a job, that's the th third worst thing to ruin a pool game. Mm-hmm. You're not lying. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, damn it, man. Why was I even thinking? Again, uh, Team Your Fault plays out of Legend Sports Bar in Naples, Florida. Team Eight Balls in Iraq playing out of Mikey's Place in Plant City, Florida. So, well, made a nice shot inside the there on the eight. 
Moving along pretty smoothly here. Don't forget Hughes Handy Solutions if you're in Bradenton, Sarasota area. Need some work done, some land clearing, any handy work around uh, your office, house, farm, whatever you need, give them a call. They can help you out. Classic Billiard Outfitters, uh, they also do graphic designs if you uh, you need stickers and other things. They're, they're not just a clothing line. Check them out at Outfitters.com, Outfitters, BilliardsOutfitters.com for uh, your promotional needs. They can help you out. My teammate bought a few of their shirts. They're actually pretty nice. So I might go buy a couple. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, uh, I was checking them out earlier. And they look, yeah, it's, it's, it's a quality, quality uh, clothing. Nothing uh, cheap there. He does all kinds of promotional stuff. If you need anything, shirts, hats, stickers again, uh, check them out. Go Advantage, you need uh, some personnel in the office, you definitely want to give them a call because they can help you out, get you the right person for the job. And while you're looking them up, might as well go to the Last Call Tavern, have a cocktail, relax, shoot some pool, and your brand new classic Pill Your Delphi shirt. You're looking snazzy, you know, you want to dress to impress. Last Call Tavern's the place to be. I'm guessing she's the rack on uh, eight balls and a rack, part of the team here. I see she's got that nice diamond wood break cue. Oh yeah. You know, I bought an Alex brick a couple of years ago, uh, and. Uh, I used it for about a month, and I'm like, oh, man, I hate this freaking thing. Because I was overhitting everything. I couldn't control I threw it in the closet. I go back to my $89 J&J &J jump break cue for like two years, right? So I'm at the pool all one day, and I'm like, my buddy, I'm like, I'm not even breaking, breaking out my brake stick. I'm like, hey, man, let me use your brake cue. He's like, yeah, it's on the table. So I smash. I'm like, man, that thing hits good. He goes, you have one. I'm like, I do? He goes, yeah, yeah. You bought it for me. I'm like. Oh my god, I have that. <laughs> that looks frick. I totally forgot all about it. That's hilarious. But it just it just generates like so much like I just I couldn't use it for a while because I'm like I'm I'm losing the cue ball. I'm like, you gotta tone it down. But it was just like I'm like I totally forgot I had it. I'm like, oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're like, you know nuts. What sounds, are you doing? Sounds like a pool player. Yep. I got sticks. I've never. I've, I've bought sticks. I've never even shot with. Uh huh. Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah, I bought a nice Chris Nitty. Never played with it. <laughs> and Nitty's a beautiful oh, skew. Oh, man, it? that his his work is so clean. Yes, she looks like she breaks really well. She broke the balls real solid. Made a couple balls. Yeah. Of course, you just gave it. The commentator curse. Yep. I, I missed so, that shot as soon as you as soon as we talk them up, they they, they say, "Oh, <laughs> I gotta make them look bad." <laughs> I almost I, I do. It's like a I'm, I, it's like a conspiracy. It's like as soon as you say something nice, they're like, "Oh, I gotta make this guy look bad." I gotta dog this freaking ball in hand hanger. And you're like, "What in the world? You're just doing so good." As soon as I said something, I think here I probably would have shot the eleven in the top corner if it went past the six. Uh, you might be able to play the one on the side, though. Well, I think if you if you can make the nine right here, back up, use the fifteen, you can go right into that. That's true. Yeah. And then use the thirteen for your outball to the eight on the side. Uh -oh. He had an inside spin on that one and hit the rail. Like I don't know if he meant to. I don't think he meant to do that. Yeah. Or is it your phone buzzing? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh, I'm looking at mine. I'm like, I don't see it light up. That's probably people looking to do an, uh, get an autograph from you. <laughs> Inside pool, I uh, want to call you and get an interview. Have a sit down with yeah. you on uh, Oprah or something. Got to talk to my sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have their people get with your people. 
You should have Lyft or uh, Uber uh, be your sponsor, you know? <laughs> right. Hey, man, you got, you got a title. You, you know, you, it's legit. Exactly. You, too, can be a professional pool player. Drive for us. <laughs> Why not, right? Right. Make your own hours. Play pool all the time. <laughs> pretty accurate it's not mine <laughs> right i mean it's, it's it's like if you should really contact him and say hey man i got the perfect sales pitch for you and i got the proof I, i've got the title to, to uh to prove it that's nice a, that's shot that's a pretty makeable jump shot yeah and, that real and rolled forward perfect for the 11. Yeah, the hard part of that is not just making the ball it's Make sure the key wall doesn't fly off the table and mm -hmm. playing position. You know, it's funny. I've seen a lot of good players today going for jump or this will begin going for jump shots when it's like you almost know you're jumping off the table. Yep. No, like, but you're still going to go for it. Yeah, I generally don't jump too much on a bar table. There's just not a lot of room to uh, keep the key wall on the table. Right. Unless you're dead straight and it's kind of towards the yeah. center of the table. When that I'm one he was only hooked by about a quarter of the ball, so it made a lot of sense. Right. But I'm watching guys trying to, you know, the ball is like two inches off the rail, and they're trying to cut cut it down the rail. I'm like, you're definitely going to jump the cue off the table. <laughs> right. And these are, I mean, good quality level players. I'm like, you have to know this, right? I mean, unless you just land on the ball dead perfect. Well, is she going to duck up and play a nice little safety? It looks like it. Yeah, that's <coughs> a smart shot. She didn't really want to tie it up, but it's fine. Well, yeah. so I think he, he's kind of forced to shoot the 14 here. Yeah, exactly. So. You're feeling your weedies, you bank it off the five and it's uh, <laughs> Well, you know, it's actually a legitimate, really, that's the sh real shot. I don't see anything else on the field. I mean, I, I hope he's not going to kick at the 11. And that's what he's doing. No? Okay, yeah. he, you're right. He's banking. I hit it dead center, but the one hit a block. Yeah, I mean, he would have made it if the one wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Like you said, he can bank it just a hair one off the five. He actually, he could have hit it the same, just hit it soft where it wides out by itself. Mm -hmm. He jacked up and hit it pretty firm. Mm -hmm. She could play on safety again, uh, hit the six, roll up on the one. If she's not confident with the... Yeah, she really doesn't have any good shots here. I mean, we roll shot of the five and the four. I think she's trying the seven and the seven. Yeah. Yeah, this shot's just kind of tricky on the bar table. Yeah, I think... Um, I'm not sure if you can... How much of the 14 you can get. I'm definitely get into the 13. Going after the 14. It's a good shot. Follow it down. Mm. Yeah, you want to put a little more left on and go up above the thirteen. What if you can bank it in a bank it cross corner? I don't know. Yeah, it you don't. Looks like it's kind of tight. Yeah. Eight might have it blocked. Just yeah, play safe. You just go up on the eleven. Not sure she can get to the six or not, but she certainly can get to the five and play it safe. Yeah, kind of like firing it a little bit, going one rough of the one. Yeah, but so if it doesn't go, you have a nice shot. Yeah, that's just a bit of well, here she's in great shape. She the five and roll down for the three. Mm -hmm. And then come back up. I mean, you're not going to get a better opportunity to get down on the three from here, are you? Yeah, you got to go for the three after this for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, 
It's not the end of the world because the weapon is good now. No. I don't know. I'd like to know what her game plan was from here. Yeah, if she meant to stun it. Yeah, I think she was trying to do a little force follow and just hit a little too low on the cue ball. But I would have personally just rolled it in. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say the, shooting the straight back here is probably the shot. Oh, he hit that nice beautiful. Shot. That was a good shot. I don't know how his position is if he can even see the 13. Well, he does have cross corner here, I think. Yeah, he just yep. hit, a, he hit a really good jump shot. Why did he jump play the 13 behind the 5? Because yeah. if you can stun the cue ball. The only danger with this is bumping the 3. Then you have the either cue ball or three ball block the pocket and it comes back. Okay, hit it with inside. Good try. And now the three ball is the problem ball a little bit here. But when your opponent only has one ball, you can just tap safe a bunch of time. Mm hmm. She can only even see it. I think so. No, I can't see it. I might just roll the seven down right between the three and the thirteen. Mm -hmm. Keep yeah, a ball in hand. Kick it one round, just tap it, but it doesn't really gain anything. So. Okay, yeah, I don't mind this shot either. Just trying to make it one round. Wait, the good. Oh, wow, what a shot. Get out of town. That was, like, that was wow. great. Well, that's why I, I always tell people just to play aggressive. If you got one ball off the table, you're just yeah. an underdog to win. Might as well just go for it. You know what? That was, yeah, you're right. That was a phenomenal shot. Right. <laughs> that was pretty sick. Absolutely. Looks like it's tight. He's looking at it, so it must not be clean. He might have to cheat the pocket a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it goes by the seven. It's a nice cross bank here. Mm -hmm. You can back it in the corner, but then that brings a scratch into playing the side, so. Yeah, he's going to cross side here. He's got to avoid scratching in the top corner. But I think he can, if you just hit straight top, it should go. I think. Yeah. Went wide. Oh, he turned it a little too much. Yeah. That was a tough shot, though. Crossing the ball a lot, it kind of picks up English and lengthens on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's kicking it one in the corner. 
I like kicking it into the side. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. It's so close to the pocket. Mm -hmm. Hell of a try. Yeah, that wasn't a bad choice there. No, no, not at all. But I, mean, I, I just feel rule of thumb is go for the close the pocket closest mm -hmm. to the ball if you have a mm -hmm. you know good angle there to personal preference. You know, not everybody sees the angles the same, so if you see, you gotta see what you're most comfortable with and go with it. asking about, like, what's this tournament? Where is it? Can I play in it? I'm like, heck yeah, I can play in it. Yeah, see you next year. All right, exactly. Yeah, we've had teams from all over, I mean, Texas, Ohio, Michigan. Oh, great shot right there. Man, what a nice, he came with a couple really good shots this game, and then got a couple funny rolls where he just couldn't get out, but he really came with some Yeah, nice he was shots. unfortunate when he kicked that, was it the 13 in the corner, and then got to where he couldn't make the mm -hmm. eight past the seven. Yeah. How many times do you make a great shot and you get burned? Right. It's, it's like, a brutal game like that sometimes. It really is. But, yeah, I mean, you know, anybody out there that's listening or tell your friends, family, whatever, uh, We've had teams from Texas, Ohio, Michigan, both North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. We get a strong contingency from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know this uh, this weekend. There's, you know, actually in Ohio, they have their Valley Tournament, so we've lost a few teams from there that normally come down. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got them coming from all over the place for this. You want to come down? Come check it out. It's called the West Coast Challenge. We've been doing this for over 20 years now. They brought in 62 tables. Uh, next year, it's at a different location. They're bringing in more tables. I think it's 82 tables. Oh, wow. Diamond seven footers. So I mean, uh, the tables are playing good. Like, they are playing good. I haven't had any issues at all with the ball rolling off or. No, they do a good job. I mean, I'll play pretty much the same. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they come in and, you know, once they set them up, obviously, they'll level them, check them, and then they'll kind of tweak them and, and keep an eye on them, um, you know, making sure. And as soon as somebody says, hey, you know, there's an issue with it, they're on it. Yeah, you didn't hit that real square. The only opening shot, well, I, well, I don't know, if the 10 ball is frozen, it might go in the side, but. Two balls early, your opening shot here. No, she can't see the two. It's dead frozen on him. Or he can't. You don't think he can see the two? No, he can't. I can see it. Oh, uh, okay. He's dead frozen on it. Wow. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe. Can he jack up and throw the 10 off the 4 into the side or off the 7? Possibly. Yeah. I know. I know. You know, at that point, nothing's easy, but. I think you got to kick at the 2. Well, it's an open table, so it doesn't matter if the yeah. ten moves. Okay, he can, might be able to spin it and kind of mask it just slightly. Yeah, he was hooked. Yep. yep. Good call. Right. Well, he got away with it because he certainly didn't leave a, anything that you'd be salvage, you know, excited to shoot at here. Nobody's salivating here to get to this table. 
Yeah, we have, uh, you see some of the ladies piling in. It's going to be a great matchup on 58 and 59 for the ladies division. So uh, if you want to jump on that, watch those. YouTube, pull up taking 58 and 59. That's a strong women's division right there, I promise you. Uh, Kia Hughes, who actually is running this tournament, is the years ago it was the international VNEA world champion. She won the world VNEA title in Vegas. <laughs> it's so funny. She was playing, uh, I haven't seen her play in years. She was playing um, a couple of the girls from Florida that are really, you know, Sandy Chang from Miami, good player, Michelle Monk. And they're like, we didn't even know you played Kia. And Kia's like, yeah, I can play a little bit. <laughs> And Kia won, you know, and they're like, shit, we didn't even know you played. We just thought you were in a tournament because <laughs> nobody's ever seen her play. She doesn't compete anymore, but she's, she can play. Yeah. So they're like, oh, wow. You know, here they're thinking, oh, we're stealing, you know. This, she runs the tournament. She's just filling in. <laughs> you yeah, know, she can get the job done. She's just winning, that's all. She's just taking home the cheddar. There's more than one ball on the table, isn't she? Yeah, yeah so I mean, uh, if you can see the 15, it's a tough cut, but I, I'm liking the 14 maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, just to get split. myself out of trouble yeah. and I can come back to that ball. Position's tough off of this ball. Mm -hmm. He's probably going into the 12 or the 8. Yeah. Well, he was good on the 9. I was talking to a, a gentleman, Mike X. He's uh, originally from Boston, and he was telling me a story about Mike Zuglin. Mike Zuglin runs the Josh Tour in the Northeast, runs the um, Turning Stone, you know, years of front of phenomenal tournaments and tours. They said back in the 90s, uh, he won like, the Josh Tour, like 10 out of 12 of them. And a lot of people didn't know, but he, he only played in the tournament. It's the only time he ever picked up his cue. He doesn't practice. And he was beaten. I mean, you know, you're talking all the good players. Siegel was there. And, and they're like, people are like, oh, he must practice all the time. And they're like, no, he doesn't play. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, Mike, are you serious? He goes, hand the guy. He says, he doesn't practice. He shows up for the tournament, runs the tournament. And he dominates. He just—he was such a good player. Yeah, that's tough to do for sure. That's yeah, tough to fade that. I, mean, I have action. to practice like multiple times a week to even be able to make a ball ever. So. You know, for uh, you know, is, isn't it crazy? So you know, Chris Gentile. Uh -huh. He's the guy. Back when he was working the outages at the power plant, you know, he's gone six, eight, twelve weeks at a time, working twelve hours a day. Doesn't pick up a stick. They, they turn him loose. He, he finds the first pool hall because he's got a pocket full of money. He finds the first pool hall he can, lead, he can find near the power plant. And he's in there in action. And he's like, give me an hour and I'm in depth. You know, he says, it's like I never quit playing. <laughs> he just has that natural ability to just pick up a cue and, and be right back in it. And I'm like, it takes me a month oh, yeah. of playing every day and I'm still, like, terrible. <laughs> you know. And then you have those people that just... Yeah, I definitely can't do that. I, no. During the pandemic, I probably didn't play pool for about six months. And then someone backed me in action, and I played, like, the worst set in my life. And you're <laughs> like, Is it, and, come on, it can't be that bad, right? And you're like, oh, man. But it's, you know, it's muscle memory. It's just seeing it. It's, it's your eyes seeing the angles. And, you know, it's that eye-hand coordination. And some people have a excellent eye-hand coordination, and I do not. Your key, key ball there, so. Yeah. Well, he's coming with some big shots, but he uh, he yeah. could he could spend a little time working on his pattern boy. <laughs> a lot of people struggle with eight ball because most people don't really play it much. A lot of the big tournaments are nine ball, ten ball. So. You know, it's funny as I I've seen it's amazing how many good players, and I'm talking. Six, six fifty, even seven hundred Fargos. 
that the, they they played terrible April because they just they never really got into it. They played terrible patterns. Ter and so I'm like, mm -hmm. and you're a really good accomplished pool player, but you play terrible eight ball. Yeah, for the longest, I was always just pulled eight ball, and I forced myself to play eight ball. I joined a tap team. I play eight ball every Thursday, and Masters we play eight ball. <clears throat> so now I kind of just figure out the patterns doing that like that. But. Yeah, I mean, when I first started playing, you know, young, then I got on a, a league, so eight ball was really, you know, pretty much what we played. And uh, I like eight ball. I, I think it's a great game because there's, it's, it's, you know, nine ball, it's mainly shot. The, the balls tell you what patterns you're going to play. Mm -hmm. Not nearly as much thinking. So I like eight ball because there is a lot of strategy to it. You have to think. You have to be able to change your mind at a split second. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I really like bar table eight ball a lot, honestly. I like big table eight ball too. Yeah. yeah. I'm going the other way. I'm taking the ball, hanging in the corner, playing the 12, coming up from the 10 and 11. Here, here's the philosophy. If I miss, that ball is blocking the eight ball. And that's kind of a league mentality. Yeah, yeah. They're, and they're taught to mm -hmm. don't shoot the ball if it's blocking the other ball. But sometimes, you know, it's the wrong pattern. And yeah. they're not. that's why they're not learning the right patterns. Because they're... See, yeah, this is the right trap. Sure, just played this well, ball. Well, now it is. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes you have to go back and forth, but... If you're playing eight ball, you don't play like a tennis match where you go from one side of the table to the other side of the table, back and forth, back and forth. You want to try to work one in and kind of work your way down. Yeah, I like going one rail a little outside and playing short side on the exit corner. Just kind of above the side pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that was the right shot. Just put up yeah, right no, on. it was absolutely. He had no other choice. That was the shot. He just... You need just, a, yeah, just, just a hair more spin. You don't want to jack up and try to draw the ball. So. No, no, no. That was a shot for sure. Just needed just a, I mean, just a quarter tip more spin on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good out right there. Hey, ball, ball in hand. <laughs> Plays almost good as David. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, that's Dave Cantrell's uh, protege right there. <laughs> this guy's going to be watching, learning. Francisco Diaz on the uh, middle table. Maybe we can get that side camera to watch him make the okay, eight yeah, ball I off for a run. Francisco in the uh, final of the loser's bracket. He, he actually plays pretty good. He plays very good. He's a real strong player. Yeah, I wasn't too happy having to spot him again. <laughs> no. I got pretty lucky to win that match. Wow. I think that was, I think he just won the match for him. So it looks like your fault just advanced over eight balls in Iraq. Pretty close matchup, though. I think it came down to the last game or two. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, again. I think, I think most of these matches are going to be pretty close. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not often you get a, a runaway. You know, and just once team is just having an awful day or something, but very seldom is, is there a runaway. I think it's more common on the, the gold bracket because you might get guys break and run a few racks. And yeah. But even then, it, most of the match is still going to be close. It but. usually does because it'll, it'll wash because, you know, you'll get one team that in the first round, they might have two or three break and runs, and then the other team will get them back later on. So it does kind of kind of wash out. Again, uh, folks, if you want to jump over on 58-59 for the ladies bracket. Uh, it's the ladies team division, which they've just started implementing, I think the last two years, um, which is uh, is a great uh, a great thing, just uh, the ladies division. The ladies like, don't necessarily always want to compete with the guys. And they just have their own thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, and these ladies play real freaking sporty, I promise you. So, 
Hard to commentate that match, so I think what I'm going to do is take a quick bathroom break. I'll be back shortly because I know they're going to throw some more matches at us on these uh, feature tables. So if you want to hang out with us, put some uh, stuff in the chat for us to talk about when we get back. Again, I am Gary G. This is Extreme Pool Challenge. We were live in Kissimmee, Florida at the 2022 West Coast Challenge. Wesley White, our men's A Division eight ball champion, sitting in with me, helping out, hanging out, talking crap. Mm -hmm. We certainly appreciate him. So if you uh, if you have any questions, you want to do a you know if you want to hire him for uh, lessons, uh, exhibitions, uh, you need a little ride to the airport, uh, you know. Whatever you need, hit us up, let us know. And, uh, anyway, we'll be back in a minute. Hang tight.
just be like, Yeah, Shane, this is uh, Kia's um, team on the other end.
Wesley Bank and Gary grabbing a bike or something. But uh, this is the team that we, uh, our team, we beat them in the first round on the winner's side. So they must be pretty good. Probably won about four or five matches in a row. So we got Wizzolito, he's a real strong player. Me and him have gone for three years. Solid. 
Yeah, that was a smart shot. Just did it play safe. <clears throat> Stuck in the whole time. or maybe possibly a three. <coughs> this is a good matchup. Uh, Joe Zinkin at the table. Uh, Tim Barron, Steve Knowles. Normally that's their team. Joe at the table, Steve uh, Knowles, Tim Barron, and a few others. They're playing uh, Latin Power is the name of the team. Jose Alito and a couple others. It's a, it's a strong team. Yeah, if your opponent speaks Spanish, you're in a bad game. Pretty, Pretty much, yeah. So, especially around here. Yeah. That's Jose Alito at the table right there. They knocked us out of the tournament. Yeah, we beat them first round. And so they must have really caught a deer because they probably played, I don't know, five or six matches in a row. Yeah, game. and they played pretty well against us. I told uh, Jose, uh, Jose Alito that he has to play last pocket when he plays me in the tournament. <laughs> and I said, I still don't like the game, but at least I get a little chance. <laughs> He's like, okay, okay, we do that. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I have no chance. But they play very smart because they do play a lot of last pocket. Mm -hmm. So, they, you know, their defense is very good strategically, you know. And he's such a good Paul striker. And he pockets balls very well. As I say that, the commentator yeah, yeah. comes into play. He actually shot that a little quick. Yeah, he's a little quick on his back swing, yeah. Yeah. But, so. <coughs> For you folks that are watching us, uh, that is half of Wesley's head behind the monitor. I'll wave to your fan. Yeah. Barely see you behind the There you are. Yep. <laughs> I'm not sure who was on uh, on Joe's team. Oh, I know they have Kim Dyer, who is a uh, monster player. He is. Mm -hmm. He's a tremendous shot maker. Also, hasn't been playing much as much as normal uh, due to uh, oh, Joe. Well, life getting in the way uh, for for Kim anyway. <coughs> but. He's a force to be reckoned with once he gets dialed in. So Jose's got a little problem with the four. He might. Well, he's going to play this angle and just spin around it. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't want to get on the rail and get straight in on the four. Right. Anything but that. He's you draw it over. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Put that ball nice. No, if he's straight and he's fine because he can just spin it. Yeah, he's got a nice little angle. He'll probably just draw back to the side rail where he's at. Just like that. Just like that. Get that straight ball in hand position on the eight. Man, he hit that freaking good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's down there. Yeah, he plays good. Thank you, Shane. Uh, he says uh, Jamie's in the chat, which is Joe's wife. The better half of that family, of course. 
she should be here with us. But uh, now this is Marco coming to the table. Black shirt, black hat. Um, another real solid player. They have a good team. So. Team Latin Power. And then they're from um, the Orlando area. I'm not uh, sure exactly where. But uh, like Baltimore Springs. Probably hang out at uh, Racks some and a couple of the other good rooms. I think Rosalito said he plays at what's it, Chalkies? No, Chalkies is in um, Merritt Island. Yeah, Could really be know. Fat Cats or um, Clicks. <laughs> Not Clicks. What's the other one? But they are from the Orlando area. Yeah, maybe. I know they're pretty local, though. Yeah. All right, so I see Angel Martinez is on the team with Joe and Kim Dyer. Trying to think of, I'm trying to see their other players. So they have a pretty strong team. Obviously, they're still in the tournament. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Jamie, there you go. Thank you. We have Kim Dyer, Drew Bridge, Tiana, Jason Fuller, Joe, and Angel. Okay, that's a strong team. Dead yeah. spot of the cue ball. Look at this. Mark 13 and 4 is going to be a little bit of a problem. 7 and 10 down by the ankle. You got to contend with, so there is work here. Yeah, kind of like solids with the 3 hanging, but the 5 is in a bad spot. Yeah, but he's got a nice shot with the 6 to uh, get started. You can use the 3 to open up the 4. And the seven's kind of tough to me. Because yeah. of the bottom rail, I think you can cut it in now. Yeah, so, so the seven, and ten, yeah, there's both both suits have some issues that you have to contend with. Mm -hmm. It is the angle he can pinch draw it back up five. Yeah, I was just going to say he may be able to draw this back. Oh, he's breaking up the four up. <coughs> now he's going to shoot the four and seven. Yeah, that's good. He might even shoot to three, one, come around for the four and play the four in the same pocket mm -hmm. as the three. Mm -hmm. It's an option, um, but if he's good on the four. Yeah, I would yeah. say if the nine is sitting oh. close enough to the side and put a five off the nine on the side. Yeah. Might be able to make the five clean. Oh, good beautiful shot. shot. Good call on playing it off the nine. <laughs> and what do you do? You tie up the four, two, and one. Break the ball up. Cut up again. That, how many times do you do that? That sucks. Yeah. It's that's like, oh man, yeah. what did I do? That I did something wrong in my previous life. Yeah, that was just a bad roll. Really. Yeah. Um, if you look at the uh, second table in Big Kim Dyer, he pockets balls like, oh my god. And I asked him. I said, Kim, I said, you pocket balls so freaking good because. He's, He's from Illinois. He said, yeah, I used to play on a 5x10 uh, snooker. Mm. And he says, you know, I'm a young kid. I'm just banging balls. And they always say, oh, you can't make that. You know, you don't shoot that shot. You don't shoot. He's like, you know what? They forced me. Like, they're challenging me. Like, he said, I just learned to shoot everything. Mm -hmm. And he does. Like, he pockets balls. Like, like Josuito. I mean, they just, they just have that natural ability just to fire them in. Well, he hung the one, which... Not too bad. Is tied up. I don't know if he really has an opening shot here. All right, Angel Martinez at the table here with the American flag. He is very sneaky, undercover, like very unassuming, but he has just a lifetime of knowledge. Yeah, I played him in the eight ball tournament. Yeah. That's pretty solid. Yeah. And he, he's actually probably a little older than he looks. He's, he's probably well into his 60s, mm -hmm. or, you know, in his 60s anyway. Mm -hmm. He had a shot on us a couple of years ago that was devastating. Like, I still have nightmares about it. And the team event to knock us out. I mean, it was such a sick cut shot that I'm like, I'll give you, like, a thousand tries. <laughs> But yet he chinned it on the first one to win the match. You're like, you gotta be kid. So your stripes. What do you think about either um, 
thinning the 14 into the one, make the one, try to keep the cue ball um, locked up or something, or uh, the nine into the one, lock it up. I'd probably bank the 14 cross side. Yeah. Cross side, you're going to run into the nine. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that 14, 13, two, if you get pretty close to being aligned with that, that is a valuable combination. Because mm -hmm. the side angle showed, I saw that, and I'm like, you know what? It, it's an option. Right. I think he's just going to thin the 15 and go sticking me on the 7, though. I think that's what he's looking at. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's just rolling it. What about playing the 15 off the 7 in the corner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, off the Bringing the cue ball around. That's what he was trying, yeah. and he uh, he got it, he came too deep into the round, missed the seven. Yeah. Now Marco's got a golden opportunity here because the sevens opened up. His four ball is a problem, and you got the two and the one to open that up. Got to kind of like him from here, huh? Mm-hmm. Pocket the two, spinning with the thirteen. Not hard, just enough to get separation. You got the one hanging. Yeah, you go for the oh, you can shoot the four one. I don't know if you can see okay. enough for the four. Yeah, that's stuff for the shot. Oh, then yeah, he's out of here. For sure. What do you do? Short, slow roll. <coughs> if you can hit the four clean center, I'd actually maybe draw it. Try to make them both get straight in on the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a good thing. Yeah. Nope. No problem with hanging the Yeah. Ball. Two, four, you're going to come out between the 13 and nine. Yeah, I like the seven as the key ball. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yep. Yeah, kind of like on rail first between the uh, 13 and nine. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You don't have to do much here. That's a no-no. Yeah, I think rail first was the way to play that shot. Sure. Because just drawing the ball like that, it's just difficult to control the cue bar. Yeah, he just he turned just a it, yeah. he turned a really good out into a, uh, as we used to say, you went from a hero to a zero. From here, it looks like it's a reasonable chance to just kick this two rails and He's got a big pocket going off the ten ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he's looking at here. Good call. The only problem is you're jacked up over the 14. You mm -hmm. got a stretch. That makes it a little bit more difficult to get a, a pure hit on the cue ball. Yep. He's definitely looking at hitting off the ten. It's going to be hard to get, unless he uses a bridge, I feel. Like this is a, he, he's got good reach, though. He's, he's like six foot, six one, so he's got good reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. I know you'll spin it a little bit. Oh. I bet he missed it by about it, less than an inch. Yeah, it was very close, though. I think I would have hit it a little bit softer than that, but it was a tough shot. Mm hmm all right, so Angel uh, feels like Christmas in uh, April. At this level, long in minutes. Yeah. Pretty much game over. Yeah, especially with nothing tied up. Yep. And they re-gifted the gift there. Angel handed Mar uh, Marco a gift, and Marco gave it back. Uh oh. Uh oh. There he's okay. Yep, just roll for the 13, 14 on the side, 10 on the side. Mm hmm.
here's something we were so inside pockets and Coco when we get our challenge matches and I'm kind of goofing up goofing around I said I'd like to get two good players we have wireless wireless headsets so we want to give the two players the wireless headsets and then we sit back here and tell them how to what patterns to play shoot out I mean this is like okay you're gonna four rail the 14 <laughs> you know but but a serious match, like not even a good. But we want to like two you know, pretty solid, like you and like Gentile. That would be like a great match, right? right. You know, but you know, you get some schmuck like me, you know, an APA four telling you like which balls to shoot and what patterns to play. It's like, okay, this is gonna be good. I got a little bit out of line. Here. Yeah, you got a lot out of line there. I think I just Kim had a uh, a really tough jump shot, and he. He obviously came like maybe a half inch for making it. But he got a good leave out of it. Yeah, the tensing in this shot, a lot of amateurs, they put too much left on this ball, and then they end up getting down too far. Because the ball naturally picks up the left angle of the shot. I look at this with just center draw. Yeah, kind of like that. Because if you put any left on that, that's going to go all the way down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Nice shot there. Good stroke. Oh, yeah, this guy. He's a very accomplished player, man. He plays very good. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Doesn't say nothing. Quiet. Very friendly. Oh wow. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, he he missed it because we were talking talking him up. Yeah, he kind of threw his shoulder. He's like, man, you guys are killing my action. When I got to dump this eight ball now. Right. Come on, man. You know, making me look bad here. And he's looking if he can play it off the eight. It's either that or cross make it. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to play it off the rail. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, no, he's cross making it. That's no good. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Yeah, I think he was, he was indecisive because as soon as he hit it, yep. he, was, he was jumping up. He was mm -hmm. cueing the air. He didn't stay down and commit to the shot. What's going on? Uh, did he give up the shot? Yeah, he conceded. Oh, he did concede. Okay, right. I didn't see he was conceded the, the game. Yeah, they were just talking about who was playing next. Oh, okay, okay. So now they're just going to talk about the, the, the shot here. And it's, they never set it up exactly. There's always a little, you know, it's the fish that got away. Let me show you this story. He was this big, but really, you know. See yeah, how he eat now, nice and soft. I was nine feet away and I had to jack up and draw it. Yeah. <laughs> You always say it's second guessing yourself. You can set the shot up a hundred times after you, and you're going to make all all five options. But the one time you need it, you don't get it. Francisco, not Francisco. Maybe Francisco, the big guy that just broke. Played good against us, too. Smart player, too. He really had some savvy moves um, defensively. I'm like, wow, that was a good shot. So, so I am not sure. I don't think he played that. Was that a four ball combo? Yeah. That's what he's 15, looking at. It almost seems like he can't miss it. Yeah, it looks like it's dead. Just a matter of controlling the five ball and the six ball. <laughs> he's going to 
membership to up in the uh, top corner here. So it must be uh, yeah, There's something there we didn't like about it. Oh, Mr. Two, you would be a great APA player though. You got a point. Yeah. All points matter. You know what? That does make a difference. I think we should make that like a national, uh, you know, something we all need to get, believe in. All points matter. <laughs> Smart player. Yeah, that's a great try. <laughs> They're having a, a question because on the feature table there's no patch. So obviously they're, they're just calling it, but on the other table they are using the patch. And I don't think he. Um, Rosalito didn't use the patch, and they're calling it, which, you know, the rules are the rules, so you have to agree ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just made a habit of it, just mark the pocket every yeah. time. Right. Yeah, unfortunately on the feature table they don't have the patch, so, right. you know what, but if it's on the table, you better use it. Yep. All the other games, like, that's what they're saying, we've been using it on all the other games on that table. So there's, you know, I can see both sides of it, but. So figure it out. And, and the rule is if they go to the tournament director, they can say the patch is on the table. All other games were used it. It's a loss of game. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been doing, just make sure you're on the same page. Now it's set. Happy? Two of you guys already done. I patched it. You watch my phone. Yeah, that's a very sticky situation. And and Kim's Kim ha Kim Dyer saying, you know what, I just patched my game, so why should you not patch yours? It's a very legitimate argument. And if they want to go to the director, um Rosalito's gonna lose the Yep. Lose the call because the patch is on the table, and the rule is you mark the pocket. Mm -hmm. so, but nonetheless, it's not our decision. Here comes Kia. Now it's, she's. Jose Luito is given the option to play the game over. If he doesn't take that, I think he's going to lose the game because they're going to go to the rule book and the rule book states.
<laughs> yeah, Jamie. The little <laughs> the little paper causes a lot of issues. <laughs> you know what? The, the rule is the rule. We've been playing the whole weekend like that, so it's nothing yeah. new. It's not a new issue. It's not a new game. It's not. Uh, it, it's not new under the sun. Yeah, I've never liked pocket markers, but you gotta know the rules. So. <clears throat> Sometimes it, uh, sometimes it can save you an argument. Sometimes it can cause you an argument. So I think they agreed to go ahead and play it over. Oh, he scratched on the break. On the bars. Mm -mm. He tried to force it, not force it a little bit, but he uh, a little juice on the draw there. You have a little bit of drama, but I think they got it sorted out. So. Well, you know, when you win the game, you don't want to have to replay because you broke it. Yeah, I had a great run out, so you well, don't want to like give you that said, up. You got to replay because they're going to forfeit that game if the team director gets involved. So. Yeah. So, as far as Jose Lito, replaying the game is in his best interest and the interest of his team, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Jamie, to patch or not to patch? That is the question. No, he's, he's a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. So now they're gonna they're gonna nitpick every rule. Yeah, this is okay. when uh, the sportsmanship goes out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't like that Kim called Hazelito and not calling it eight. So now they're kind of being nitpicky about him calling. Yeah, you're right about that. Says the, that argument, you're gonna see some uh, adrenaline pumping on some shots and some uh, maybe some possible <laughs> discretional shots and calls. Wesley just uh, going to make a call on the shot here. Down on the ladies' uh, match. Kim Malone just made a great shot there. He was going to bank the five. He miscued on it. Just to keep all slowly rolled up on the eight and one. And actually, it probably made it better for him. Because I don't think the eight had a pocket before. Mm -hmm. It looks like it goes in the top corner. Probably yeah. where the ten ball is, too. Mm -hmm. And probably down in the bottom, or the upper left, as we're looking at it, where Rosalito's standing. See, that's when he might shoot at that and then play the eight in the same pocket he's shooting into now. So I gotta ask him. Watch your name. He's got that big chain and thing on his necklace. And you, I, I, I saw you have yours in it. Did you I, mention that? I yeah. guess you're just so used to it, you don't even think about it. But that doesn't. You don't even acknowledge it or know that it's there, do you? Yeah, I've been playing with it so long. I yeah. actually got I got it when I was baptized like ten years ago. Oh, nice. So I've just been playing with it for a long time. So. Yeah, so you don't even like it. Doesn't even exist to you. Sorry. <laughs> Me, I, I, I can't wear a watch. I can't wear anything. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, nice shot there. 
See, the weird thing is I'm actually right-handed, but I play pool left-handed. So I wear the watch on my the hand I stroke the ball with. So you, most players put it on the opposite hand, a bridge hand. Yeah, your bridge hand. So. Wow. That's crazy. Well, Jose Lito justified himself with it. He got the 10-0 that he mm -hmm. had won previously with. Here he's, he's a little fired up right now. He's the team translator, so. Yeah. He, he plays pretty good, though. He team plays very good. Got a big stroke. Can really juice the ball if he has to. Mm -hmm. he, he can come with some intensity, too. He can make very low percent shots look like they're hangers. Uh, Brian Ambrose, yes, it's a total points. Uh, it's a 15 game format. Uh, total points, once it's mathematically over, the match is over. So you could have three or four games left, but if it's mathematically over, then that's it. Kim got good action. I think the 14 goes by, the nine, or he could shoot a 15-10 combination. The 11-6 is the issues here uh, for the stripes. And uh, for the solids, the 6 and 4 and the 7 are a problem. So mm -hmm. what do you think of your listening? I'm not sure if he can play the 4-6-11 combo or not. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That looks a little tough. I, uh, yeah, okay, he's playing the 15-10. Yeah. Problem with that is you might, if you go straight into the four, you can get stuck behind the six. Right, you could potentially lose a shot. But he's got the 14. I think that's true. Yeah, <laughs> he's very distinctive in making the call. And the, right. I think he's just you know, making a point there. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful yeah, shot. Real and she did to get the shot on the 11. I'm pretty sure the 15 goes on the side, so yeah. he shouldn't have any issues here at all. Yeah. <laughs> He's out. That's what a beautiful break and run here. You can hear the little frustration as he's chalking the tip, grinding away. Enjoying a nice cocktail and a cigar as he's watching some good pool. Flip, we appreciate you. Yeah, my call collection of uh, tobacco pipes at home. So. Yeah, you're a pipe smoker or a cigar mm -hmm. smoker or both? I usually just go with the pipe, but sometimes I get a cigar. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Uh, I can't do any of them. I never have. Never will. out there by Kim. Nice break and run. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sure that was really, really like, he just made sure he wanted to get that yeah, one down. They're, they're all frustrated with each other. Yeah. Yeah, so. you know, when you're competing for something like this, you know, the tension can get kind of thick. Yeah. <laughs> 
Margo at the table. That 11 ball, he says, I'm not sure what round they're into. And how close it is. Oh. Chance? I want to say it's top six. Because if we would have won our match, we would have been top eight. So I think they've already played two matches. Okay. One match past ours, so. It's either top eight or top six. Yeah. I'm wondering how close this match is. Actually, just look at the ring. It's too much like work. <laughs> And the ladies' match is still going on at 58 and 59. If you're interested in that, go to YouTube. Check it out. You know you do is punch in the table. You can watch Okay, them. yeah, it's... They're in the top six. Top six? Okay. So this is good. Guaranteed fourth. Okay, winner goes guaranteed fourth. Loser is fifth, sixth? Yeah, correct. Nice, okay. So it's 175 for fifth, sixth, and then 415 for fourth. So. Okay. And it's split with... Four or five ways. For yeah. yeah. Big money, you know. Yeah. First is 1500 so. 300 a man. Yeah. I mean, the entry was only, I think, to 50. It's 50 dollars. Yeah, it's yeah, 50 man. Yeah. 50 man, 200 a team. Yep. So. I've, I've been telling them for years to raise the entry. Um, yeah, they really should. Just to get that money up there, you know. I mean. The money's in the singles, obviously, but you know what? Your teams, you're going to spend the money. You spend 200 a man. Yeah, exactly. At least for the gold division. Right. You know, Especially with a lot of less, there's a lot less teams, so I think it makes sense to jack it up a little bit. Yeah. All right, here we go. You know, the second ball break. Oh, look at this cluster in the middle of the table. Yeah. That's, a lot of my teammates are breaking the second ball, and I just I, really like it. I, you know, and I have good luck with that. I've, I, I really only converted over about a year ago with that. And I've had good success normally with it, not this tournament. Mm -hmm. I did not have good success with the second ball break here. Yeah, once I stopped scratching, I had a pretty good success just breaking ahead mm -hmm. straight on. So. Yeah, you you actually were crushing the break. You were like um, a diamond, you know, the first well, diamond. Actually, I just watch some YouTube and watch uh, Skylar and Chain Breaks. <laughs> That's how you get good, just watch YouTube. Yep. Yeah, That's all you got to do. Eat potato chips, watch YouTube. And be a champion. Exactly. I mean, I'm qualified for eating potato chips and watching YouTube. <laughs> Still haven't become any good. <laughs> All right, he's calling safe. So I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of deliberate uh, shot calls on exactly what they're doing. Marco with a big win over Joe. Man, he came out with That was a huge win. I don't know what the point standing is now, but I imagine that... Latin Power is up by at least 20. Yeah, Latino Power has been playing strong. They've had some big wins there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim came with a real strong win uh, for them, but I don't think it's uh, enough to reel them back in. Yeah, winning a Rack 10 0 is just huge. It's a huge swing. Mm -hmm. Shane says, we're all pros on the side or behind the screen. I am willing to give Shane Van Noning the seven ball back here. I mean, yeah. I just feel like, you yeah. know. I mean, I do have a thousand Fargo from, from the yeah. chair. I haven't missed a ball since I've been commentating. You didn't miss a ball when you weren't, when you were playing, <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, then once I was off stream, I missed everything. So. <laughs> when your mom's watching, you got to play good. So. Yeah, right. Make Got to make her proud. <laughs> Jimmy, kid, you dishes. What's going on, buddy? If you're looking for, uh, need some real estate, buy or sell, and you're in Coco, give them a call. Check them out. Shane says, easy work. Yeah, come on out here for 18 hours a day. Yeah, I think I'm, I got two hours of sleep maybe last night. Yeah. Maybe three hours the night before. Walking in at 8 in the morning, walking out at 2 in the morning. Oh, yeah. oh he got a hold of that. He's not going to like it. Yeah, he 
just crashed. Oh, dear. oh my too. goodness. The, the outside English there uh, grabbed on the rails that didn't scratch. He definitely got a hold of that one, though, didn't he? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try to just go into the 12 there. Hmm. Uh oh, Relix. They're back. Safety here and try to lock them up. Yep. It's a good shot. Does the 4 6 uh, go if he gets to the middle of the table? No. Now it's off, huh? Yeah, it's going right out of the pocket. Good hit. Watch the eight ball. He got on the side. <laughs> and he got it around. Nice try there. Yeah, forced him to deal with the coaster. Three's kind of tough too. Yeah, three, three's in a real bad spot. If you can break it out off the seven, you should be fine. But if you can get to the three in the opposite corner playing off the one. Mm -hmm. He didn't go for the breakout. Yeah. He felt like maybe he can, feels like he could throw the six. It was tough because it was hard to get a shot after the breakout. So. Mm -hmm. well, we see the breakout now. Break oh, wow. Did not expect that. I'm shocked he missed that breakout. Jimmy Dishes, they've been uh, trying to get in there in the chat with us all day. We've been waiting for you. Now that you're here, maybe they won't keep hitting us up in the chat. The dating site. I want to try to go to the end rail and then we could just spun the rail into this, uh, the cluster. You got a seven, and the seven's your insurance ball a little bit. Oh, man, he's making it tough on himself. Oh, man, team. Uh, yeah, they've won almost every round. They, so they, they're, they're dialed in, man. They are yeah. playing strong. Their eight ball game is very, very strong. He's got a little bit of angle. He's fine. He can kind of pinch it with a little top left and spin it. Yeah, like that. He whacked it, but the four doesn't go by the ten, does it? No. So, again, he's still got to do I don't think it does. a breakout or something. I think it goes in the opposite corner. Yeah, it definitely goes in the opposite corner. Yeah, I kind of like going rail first from the seven and trying to spin to get to the uh, shoot the four up table. I think that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's a really touchy shot. That or you're trying to freeze up on the back of the eight and play safe. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah he's going to have to come off the eight to go forward, though. Unless the four just goes. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it does. He's going to play the four down on the head string. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to shoot it up there. He's going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a hanger, but it's a very makeable yeah, shot yeah. here. I think he's a favorite for for sure. No, how do you shoot this with just center top or? Yeah, let's go back and forth, put it through in the side, yeah. See, the thing is, you're going to clip that 12 or three, probably, yeah. right? Yeah, if you're going to clip it, then you can just kind of. Would you, would you consider drawing out of that? With yeah, low, with low cool. left and, and come out two rails? Yeah, if he has to, yeah. Because you can even swing it three rails all the way around to mm -hmm. the center table and play the two by the eight. He does have another option to cut the two on the side and come down into that and try to run into it. Right. But I like this shot better. He did it perfect. Yeah, he was fine just to make the ball go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done.
Nice. That was a good, uh, was a good out. The Cozalito missed. He did. He's left Angel at the table. match still going on at the last tables and they're getting down to the nitty gritty here mm -hmm. you're going to hear somebody hooting and hollering here in a second well, once we find out who the winner of that match is going to be you know you don't ever see the guys hugging after they ate your game oh, I just beat you and, oh, come give me a hug You're like, no, I want to take you out in the parking lot and smash your head against the curb. And the girl's like, oh, I love your alpha. That was a great run out. You just skunked me. <laughs> the last hug I got is when my teammate dogged. He dogged his brains out when we were playing for the Masters trip to Vegas. And then I played a good set, 1-7-1. And then he, he's like, Mike's going to have a hug. <laughs> That's great. And I was like, yeah, Mike, you can have a hug. That's funny. <laughs> I like it. Mm. So funny though. I think more so for a lot of them, is, especially the ladies that are playing now. They all know each other. They've been friends for years and years and years. So it's not like it's not like these two teams where they don't really know each other and they're like really don't care for each other right now. Yeah, it's very obvious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, uh, Shane. You know what? That's that's true. Last night in the finals of the B division. You know, they were high fiving and hugging each other. Yeah, that, and that was, was cool to see. Yeah. Uh, Terrell Morgan and Kevin yep. Delgado. Yep. But they have mad respect for each other. They're they're friends. They're cool with each other. So, you know, and that's the difference. Is you know, when you when you're friends like that, that's you're gonna, yeah, you're, it's cool. But you don't see it very often, man. It's usually like well, it's easy to be friendly when you're guaranteed thirteen hundred. You know, yeah, so. that, yeah. It does take and sweeten the blow a little bit if you don't win. Usually it's like, you MF her, I want to kill you. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, man, you know. Try to keep it real. <laughs> I mean, come on, you guys are in the chat. Back me up here. <laughs> All right, nice shot there by Joe. Stripes are actually looking pretty good here now. Um, 14, I think the only his only questionable ball will be the 15-5, but he can break that out over the, off the 11. We're drawing in, uh, draw off the 14 now and, and get into it. And that's gonna scratch. that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Because he didn't have the angle draw back because the cut you could see the natural uh, direction of the ball as soon as he hit it. So what are your trouble balls here? Seven ball. Yeah. I'm shooting seven first. Yeah, for yeah sure. definitely. Draw back. You can yeah, either shoot the two one or shoot the one after that. I would. I try to draw back to the five. To the side. five. And then if you get bad, you always have a chance to get back on it again. Mm -hmm. But that's a good call. You shouldn't really have any. Yeah, the problem is you really want to shoot at the ball straight in because it's kind of a tricky shot, but you also don't want to be on the rail, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I like this where you kind of put it in the side pocket a little bit to give yourself the angle going the other way so that you won't be on the rail shooting the side. Yeah, just like that. He's a pretty young guy here, and he plays pretty savvy, mm -hmm. uh, smart guy. He's actually like the uh, team captain because he speaks the best English on the team. Yep. I was going to say team uh, translator. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised you're shooting the one here. Uh, yeah, he really let up on his stroke there. Yeah. You do that when you're trying to hold that ball and baby it. Okay, I see what he's doing. He's going to play the one, two, then the five on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then the six, three, eight. Yeah, that made sense. 
So I'm saying about slow rolling the balls. It's like you see a lot of players, even good players, they miss the slow roll shots a lot. Yeah, because you, you decelerate and you steer in the stick a little bit and right. then it uh, just throws it off just that a little bit and then that's all it takes. A fraction of an inch and you're going to hang that ball just like he did. Good shot there by Jim. He's like, stay up, stay up, stay up. That's real good with 11 left. Yeah, he's going to have to just a nice uh, stroke on the nine to follow the one in. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's deep enough to where he can just hit the left side of the one and he'll just follow it in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a nice smooth uh, draw stroke so that the nine gets a little follow on it. I'm looking at playing the ten first. Oh, I, yeah, I got to play the nine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give a whole lot better look at it. Position on the nine anywhere else. It's so. definitely not the shadow chew because that's the only thing protecting right. you from the slicks. Right. Absolutely. I would never. I would have played the combo into it. Like that. Yeah. Something. Yeah, that's kind of a strange choice. Uh, Joselito just made a nice shot and scratched. Give an angel a knock golden opportunity to steal this game. <sighs> Tell you what, man, he's making it tough on himself, but he might get there. But he took the hard, yeah, I don't like the hard position because you're going across your, your path there, so it's real, it's real difficult to position. Yeah, see, that's why I just need to go ahead and shoot the nine first. Because mm -hmm. now he's shooting. He's going to be shooting the nine from basically where he was anyways. So. Mm -hmm. And then if he would have missed, he had the 11 hanging, blocking the six. Yeah, that was for saving grace. Right. So. No, you were good. And that's going to... Yeah, this is a tough, <laughs> tough shot jacked up shooting it with bottom yeah. left. Because you got to judge the, the last saving grace is he, he might have hooked him on most of the balls. Right, because like, imagine if the 11 still there. Like, mm-hmm. Forcing him to bank the six or something. Maybe it was a design plan to play safe. <laughs> no? Okay. He's calling the. He's got a back cut to five to the. To the right. Now Joe's again. He's in, he's in worse shape on the nine now than he was ever. <laughs> well, now the nine goes in the other corner pretty easily. So I think yeah, now you got to come with a tough. You know, you got to come with a good shot on the ten. To get there. If he's got the angle a little bit, he can just draw straight back. If not, he's gonna have to juice it and kind of spin it around to the corner. Now. Yeah. I guess if he has the other angle, just go forward. He hit that one good. He may redeem himself here. This is big. You went 10 2 here. That's a, that's a pretty good lift for your team here. I just got to judge the. I think you stun, stun follow with the over a right spin. Going towards the six ball. Oh, he overspun it. Oh, he went towards the six ball, right? Yeah. Not that much towards the six ball. And now he's going to play for the bank. Yeah. It's one of those shots you ate. You get a little like, I gotta load up on this shot. I mean, you really don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Actually, you want to kind of err on um, underhitting it. Because if you underhit it, you, you always have a shot. If you overhit it, then. I think most people are scared to scratch in the sign. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. This is tough. This back. Oh, he's back up. Yeah. That's tough. Jacked up. Jin did. Oh, nice shot. Yeah. Dude, that was a fantastic shot under the gun. Oh, Man. Yeah. That's a great shot. Yeah, he definitely redeemed himself there. Jamie, when he gets home, smack him in the head and then give him some lessons. That was a big game for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really need that one. Yeah, 10-2 is, is a big win. They're running the numbers to see where they stand. Yeah, I mean, they got to be down to the last couple games here. Yeah. 
That's one of Joe's best shots. Back up like a ninja. Well, I'll tell you what, he's ninja all over that thing because he killed it. <laughs> You're right. Let's see how the break is. He, he just needs to really hit it solid. That's a nice spread there. Watch the four. Four ball down. Oh, what a cluster. Look at that. 15, 9, 10, 2. What a mess that is. Separate as well as he would like. He would have loved to. I mean, I'm tempted to just uh, fire the 11, just slam it into the stack. You know, <laughs> but you know what? It's kind of a legit shot. Um, probably going to come in towards the 3 1. Yeah. Oh, he, he did not. He's gonna go. He's gonna okay, take yeah, it. Like yeah, got the angle. Just go into like the nine fifteen. Yeah, I, I would have liked it off the eleven so that I use that fourteen to uh, get. Like, I'm off the break. I'm not that I would use that. Um, I would have tried to go in off the first shot because if I don't have a shot, I use that other ball yeah, that he just shot always, as your saver. I always saber. tell people break out the balls early. Don't yeah. wait until the end. Yeah, you never want to shoot up your ducks and then go after the trouble. Yeah. Um, He's got another chance to break it on. Just cross bank it. You know what? I don't even know if I do that. I think I hit the nine and try to knock the six in. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of put the cue ball in there between the nine and the ten. Don't let him see anything but the five, which is frozen on your twelve. He's going to scratch. Well, I'm not going to do too much because nothing goes except for the six ball. Maybe. Yeah, I think the move is just to... Try to move your balls a little bit and just play safe. Now you can maybe get, uh, play the seven cross side and kind of run up into the one, two. Mm -hmm. or, um, or the five ball. Yeah, I mean, that is a trouble. Shoot the six, you just smash, them, smash and grab here. Oh, yeah, if the six goes, yeah. You definitely just cut it and slam it into the ball. I don't think so. He can't. You think? I don't think so. No. I think the two's blocking him. Yeah. Safe, he said. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Block the pocket. Yeah, that's perfect. The one goes with the other one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was an issue on the five ball. Mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely want 
wants to shoot the one, probably the last. Just kind of as an insurance. The thing about that is you have to be on the right angle to get to that ball. It's really you only have a small portion of it to hit. He might actually try to open it up now if he has an angle. Yeah, he's got the wrong angle to go into the five. Yeah, he might have, I think he has an angle to come down into the 13 one. Right. He, has, he just has to be careful. I'm looking at off the 12 in the side. Roll up on the 9, shoot the 10 out off the 12. Yeah. Is it too far off the side pocket? He was looking at shooting the 13 right now. Off yeah. the 2. I don't think it, I, th I think it's too yeah, think far. It's, yeah, I think it's too low. Yeah, too, yeah exactly. Right. Good call. He's, he's calling it. No, he's going for it. Yeah. He's definitely going to open up the 12. No. Oh, man. Yeah, he actually has it. He's on the right angle to make the 5. I think he can shoot the 5 from here. Mm -hmm. Or shoot the 2 and, and break it open, either one. Yeah, it's close. Frozen to the 12. Yeah, maybe it doesn't go. I just oh, hit it good. Yep, that's perfect. Now I can just throw back to the one. Yep. Just pop it off the rail a little bit and then you straight down the eight. Yeah, I think um, going for that 13 off the two, obviously, it's the wrong choice. Not because he's going to lose the game, but because it didn't really go. I think this was a punch. Off. I see Marco breaking his cue down. Yeah, yep. I think they still have one more to go, but they're probably up by a decent margin. So. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a good match. It got a little heated there towards the middle, but uh, yeah, I think they sorted it out. tensions run a little thick like that. Yeah. So, great match between those two. and. Uh, I mean, that's strong. They lost the first round to us, and then they're just grinding they're, away. And I mean, they're 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 in the groove now. You know how it is. You get on the one loss side, yeah. you start playing, man. You just get dialed in, start feeling it. So, uh, Latin Power—that's the name of the team—and uh, they're, hey, they're showing some power because they really came through at the end. They had a couple big wins there. Uh, the other team, you know what? They they fought hard back. They had a couple uh, good wins to close the gap, but just at the end, they just came up a little bit short. So, and the ladies match still going on over there. And that's that's got to be nip and tuck. They really got to be uh, battling it out over there. That that match started uh, a while back. Right. This would be pretty close to done. Yeah. I don't know what they're for. I think that's a 16 game format. Four, it's a four lady person team. Well, I think I'm going to take a quick break and uh, go stretch my legs. I'm going to go check my hair, make sure I look good. You got a face for radio. So. I do have a face only a mother could love, and it's good for radio. <laughs> so that is true. But uh, so we'll hang back, guys. If you're out there, hang in there. And. Uh, 
I'm not sure if they're going to be calling some more matches tonight or not, or wait until tomorrow to wrap it up. So I think they were going to do the Scotch Devils. Yeah, so I'm going to go and uh, do a little investigate and see what's going on. Uh, Shane's been watching the ladies. Dogfight, he says, back and forth. Well, you know what? They're two really strong teams. They both have great players on their team, so we expected that ladies match to be extremely tough. So, um, yeah, I heard they were waiting because Tammy's playing the, um, the women's event. So I think they were waiting until he was done to play the scotch doubles on the screen table. Okay. So, all right, well, we'll hang see. in there, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This is Gary G. Coming to you live from Kissimmee, Florida, for the 2022 West Coast Challenge. We are Extreme Pool Challenge. Hang in there, and we'll be right back. Thank you.